consolidated order, please. This is the Village of Riverside Board of Trustee regular meeting for Thursday, December 4th, 2014. The time is 7 o'clock. Will you please call the roll? Trust, uh, President Sutton. Here. Trustee Sussman. Here. Trustee Hamilton. Here. Trustee Ballery. Here. Trustee Collins. Here. Trustee Foley. Here. Interim Manager Francis. Here. Village Attorney Marks. Here. Village Attorney Molina. Here. Also present, Village Clerk Haley. Uh, and that was just this evening, Trustee Collins, for arriving. You may be arriving late. Yeah. Okay, we have a quorum. If you'd please join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, <coughs> before Thanksgiving, I had enough room back here. Now I feel kind of, <laughs> feel kind of squashed. <laughs> uh, thank you all for coming this evening. If you're here with us in the audience, you're welcome to speak at any time during our meeting. You can have your comments during public comment, or if you would rather wait till a particular item comes up, you can speak at that moment. I just ask that you be recognized by the president and that you make your comments from the podium so that the folks at home can hear and see what you have to say. Having said that, is there anyone here this evening who would like to address the board? Mr. Gallagher, sir. In his Christmas finery. Alex Gallagher, 3234 South Harlem. Uh, good evening, Mr. President, trustees, those in attendance, and to those watching at home. Sir, I come before you and the Village Board on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce. It is, sir, my pleasure to inform the public of upcoming Chamber events. Tomorrow night is our annual holiday stroll. <sighs> it begins tomorrow at 5.30 by the Water Tower with the RV High School Magical Singers awaiting Santa's arrival, <clears throat> and uh, he will arrive by fire truck at 5.45, and the tree lighting begins at 6. Thereafter, Santa will be at Riverside Bank. Parks and Recreation will have edible Christmas craft sessions, eye sculpting will be at the train station. Uh, Chicago Bear Doug Phone will also be there for autographs. Uh, Burlington Realty will have juggling and magic acts. Higgins Glass will have their newest creations in their studios for unveiling and sale. Champagne tasting and jewelry at Arcade Jewelers. Riverside Garage will have their famous train displays Pony rides, um, they're going to have a fire pit going, hot chocolate, an assortment of other, uh, of other things going on there. Uh, Town Hall, here we will have the uh, District 96 Choir, and there will be auctions and sports memorabilia all over the place. Uh, the list goes on and on. And we have a special thanks to the Honorable Judge Allegretti, State Senator Stephen Landek, State Rep Mike Zalewski, the Honor the uh, Riverside Swim Club, Rod Fusco, and Connolly. Cyber Toast, and of course, Brian and Claudia Brennan. <clears throat> uh, there's been some talk lately about CMAP and the uh, Burlington Streetscape, a plan which has been in the works for over a year. Suggestions have been made to delay things, hold things up, start all over, and wait for a day where everybody agrees on everything. The smartest thing to do is to file the appropriate documents and transition the funding out of the state's hands and into the hands of the village. <clears throat> the sooner, the better. And then we can get things moving underway. This is such a huge opportunity. It is far too big a risk and to take on procrastination. <clears throat> it's as simple as that. We have been pleased with the professionalism of Burke Engineering. They have listened to suggestions for changes from one rendition to the next, and they are now on their fifth. The chamber has had representation at every meeting regarding the renovation, and all organizations and commissions have been invited to take part, as well as the general public. Plenty has been talked about. It's time to start doing. Let this project get underway and get those shovels ready. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, and we look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow night for the holiday show. I have nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. Thank you. Sorry, everybody. Do you know what the weather's supposed to be tomorrow night? 36. And I think Gene talked about the nature, and it's going to be no snow. Perfect. Thank right. you so Thank much. You. Appreciate it. Yeah.
But I just want to add, uh, come by uh, First American Bank between 7 and 8 and hear the Acapella Choir ring those Christmas bells. So, uh, not sing. Plenty of things going on That's it. We're ringing. Anyone else like to address the board? <laughs> Ms. Lamatia? Well, I'm excited about the stroll tomorrow, and that was very cheery and exciting, and um, we'll be participating at the Village Hall as well, uh, playing the violins with the District 96 kids, and I'm really excited about that, and I love Riverside, and I do a lot of things around here, but i got to tell you, I'm pretty sure you haven't read the paperwork, you haven't made the phone calls I have, and you don't have any idea how the funding works. I would like a show of hands of anybody who's read the grant information or talked to the grant representatives. Have any of you? Have you, Mr. Sells? Yes. Okay, who else? Have you, Ms. Francis? Yes. Okay. Any of the other trustees? Have you, Mr. Ballerin? Have you read it and talked to the representatives? You have not. Have you? No. Have you read the grant? Have you looked at how? Ms. I, to you. No. This you is know your what? Opportunity this to board. Speak. I will tell you something. You have mishandled this situation and you insulted a lot of people at the last board meeting. So you have to break down a little bit here and give a little. Because I'll tell you what, there was a lot of intelligent people that came here because they were compelled to. Because the first time, regardless of the fact that you are saying we've seen this for a year, it's been in the works for a year, that's nice behind the scenes. That's great. I am a member of a commission. I am a chairperson of a commission. I did not know this was going on for a year. Nobody that I've spoken to in positions of leadership who aren't on your inner circle knew that this was going on until October or November. So that assertion, it hasn't even been awarded since April of this year. I don't know about your math, but a year ago would have been November. Were you doing something behind the scenes in November that we were supposed to know about? Okay, so come on. This is not appropriate. There are exaggerations going on, and it's not being handled well. So a bunch of people came out last month. They give you their very authentic, sincere, respectful insights. We had Trustee Pollock, the only person that you pointed to as a designer on this board as the only man who was completely ignored and he pushed it and he pushed it so trustee Hamilton tried to back his idea that was suggested that he thought of right up front that you ignored to get RFPs for extra designs so because you don't you don't go with one design and then peel it back and and keep taking people's ideas and, and well, I'll write it down and I'll bring it to them that's not how great design happens that's how mediocre design might happen this Grant, according to the people who, and I got their names, I got their numbers, why haven't you been doing this work? Why not? They are like, no, we haven't made contact with them. I would like to know who exactly told you that this money could be lost. This is a federal grant, it is not an Illinois grant. They are coordinating the process through Illinois. This is federal money, and short of Washington, D.C. breaking down, we cannot lose this money unless we miss the dates. Shame on you for not knowing it, and shame on you for asserting it because it's false. You guys made great, you had great ideas, Trustee Foley, and by the end you said, you know what, it's not really possible to get great design anyway. Because, what, it's what, true, what, I've got it written here. I'll, what, I'll now, I'm not, I'm not attacking no, you. No, no, I'm, no, no, I'm no, attacking no, no, no. what happened in this like room that night. Bend, excuse me. Because would, you were all like... over it. You had great ideas. You were right on it, and you were with Trustee Pollock, and you were with Trustee Hamilton. And what did I say in the end? said, we may not hit the nail on the head and that's okay, but I don't think you can. I don't think you can because how are you in a village of this many people going to make every single person in this town you cannot. like it? You, you can't. You cannot. Exactly. You can't, mm -mm. right? Nope. All right. And now I'm not here to defend our choice of who is designing it, who's going to actually be building it. My my purpose for being here is to listen to the ideas and make sure that they get implemented. And you've, you continue to have opportunities to provide these, these bits of information about how you would like it to be changed. But, That's not my but job as, either. That is not as my I job. I sit on this side no of the table and knowing what I do for a living, I see a lot of economies in scale in using the engineering firm that is also going to be doing all the work that's underneath that, underneath the street. I have no scale, issue with that. Absolutely right? none. Right. So none. those projects have to dovetail together very closely, so that the center of our town is not torn up for six or seven months. Great. Agreed. Right. And we have the ability to 
input on material choices and how it looks, and whether or not they're on their fifth rendition or their 15th rendition, when it's done, everyone will have a chance to put in and say, do you like the 14th rendition? That's not how the design 15th. works. You don't, you don't come up at the end and then go, do you like it? What, what have you guys, are, are really? You, really? And the Mr. only, guy, the only guy that has any ideas about design is not here tonight. You had, you go listen to last month's, you go listen to last month's meeting and you listen carefully to the people who came in here intelligently and gave you respectful commentary. And then you listen to your own outstanding insights and how President Sells steamrolled this group and said, no way, I'm right, you guys don't have any say. The projects, you guys, the projects that I work on you, on a daily basis in my personal career change all the oh, time. Of course. They do. Of course. They why do. don't you want to see, why don't you want information? How can you defend against that, any of you? How can you defend against this? Mr. Pollock says, we owe it to respond to the question of doing an RFP. The staff, maybe the staff could provide us with a report to do an RFP. Like, find out, does it threaten the project? Is it, and you know what? Trustee Hamilton said, yeah, maybe we could get an RFP on the design portion. And Mr. Foley said, you know, the design element's a small but critical portion. And you said, yeah, I agree, it's 100% of what you see. And it went on and it was a beautiful, thoughtful commentary. Uh, let's see, um, I too heard the people tonight, your words. And we can take their input or a committee's input, although you're dreadfully fearful of that because apparently nothing can get done with a committee and I can name countless jobs that get done well with committees. Is this confusing to you? No, but the okay. committee was elected by the people. These are them. No, the committee okay. is Ben Sells and, two, and two people who, who have been employed in this village less than a year. Is that correct? Okay, two people employed in the village of Riverside for less than a year and a man who has no design professional experience are calling all the shots for a historic community. Oh, I got a great quote from you on that. I heard a great quote. All out of your mouth, Mr. Sells. So, okay, Mr. Foley, you said, I too heard these people. I agree, we should do it right. I have not read the grant. It is our biggest legacy. It's not the dollar amount, but getting it right with the materials and the design. Great, right on. Trustee Hamilton, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head that the 5% of the job represents 100% of what people see and experience, right? Burke is an engineering firm, and I'm concerned about that. And then you say, well, they're professionals. Well, yeah, but he's done 70 landscapes, 70 streetscapes. We don't fall in the same category of any of them. Mr. Lupfer, I think it was, he actually gave you a guy that is nationally recognized for outstanding design. It can be done, it can. You even suggested, let's give it to somebody who wants to put this feather in their cap. Let's go to a great design firm. Mr. Ballerin, you're, you know, you kind of sit back, kind of quiet. What do you say? You know, I'd hate to get to the precipice again and then lose everything. So I think what Doug said makes sense. You're like, you know, I don't know if we should push forward. I don't know if we should do this, but let's find, yo, it's in, it's in last week's video, I promise you. Everybody's saying, you know, let's just find out. You don't have to do it even. And you're like, no, we're not. I'm the man. You're not the president, you're the mayor. It's outrageous. I've never seen a project run like this privately or publicly. It is outrageous. Um, so you say, well, we, an we anticipated that. Okay, they're not all engineers. They've done 70 streetscapes. Sure, they're McMansions. They are the McMansions of America. You can see them in every great new downtown. Good job. And Burke's got them and that's fine. They do a fine job. It is not appropriate to this village. And this board needs to stand up for that. You guys know it, you talk about it, you see it, and then you go, okay, Ben, what is that? We need a board, because you are elected officials. We didn't elect Ben to do this, we elected a board to do this. This board is not even, they're not informed. You're informed by Ben, who is telling you false information. And I can say that very comfortably, because I have, found the documents and then I made the phone calls and I've spoken to the people who represent it. I've spoken to people from Washington to downstate Illinois to our engineer in Schomburg that's supposed to be helping coordinate this as well as uh, the lady who works with our public works department. You all need to do that too and find out what's going on because it's not up front. Our plan, this is, a, this is from Mr. Sells. Our planning liaison said the feds can withdraw funding for either grant. Okay, well, 
The man I spoke to today, I will give you his name. Oh, here it's on this one. Christopher Holt. You familiar with him? You familiar with him? Excellent. So he said you'd be more likely getting hit by a meteorite than losing this funding. There is no pressure. Ms. Collins, you are most concerned that we're going to lose this money, and I so appreciate that. I want this project to happen, and I want it to be great, and I want to utilize all the money. Now, there's not one grant. There's two grants, and I'm aware of that, too. The street paving grant has a shorter threshold. So what Tom Lupfer mentioned in the grant was for the streetscape. That goes till 2016. We have a much broader um, time frame to get information in and go through the project. Yes, sir. Has the LAC put together their wish list of every single thing they want the street safe? No, 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 no. It's, it's just I mean, an absurd way to design. Want... No. We're not allowed to. I have documentation. Wait a second. Ben said, said we're not allowed to. Wait. wait. We're, In we're asking for input, right? I'm, I'm asking. No. In no, writing. Let me, let me rephrase that. All right. I'm asking. Uh -huh. Trustee Foley is right. asking for input of anybody out there, right? To give me their wish list. And I'm going to take that wish list and I'm going to give it to the engineering firm and let them implement it into their design. Do you hear now, yourself? If you You're going to give it to the engineering firm. I'm not going to tell them where to put the pipes. I'm not going to tell them how to drain the water. Do you understand how engineering firms and design firms oh, work I, together? More than I like to know. Yes, I do. Okay. As a matter of fact. So you know that when a design firm designs something, they give it to an engineering firm to see if it's feasible to be built. Sure. Right? Yeah. Okay. And they implement and overlay the drawings of the design firm into their engineering drawings. Okay? So that's how the process works. Well, after the design is right? established, Right? So sure. if I say I want this color paver stone, the engineering firm specs that in the engineering drawings. There you go. There's your stone. That's you want. That came from the LAC or whoever wants it. He, and that's he, how he you want this design want, piecemeal right? by everybody's thought. Well, it's not piecemeal. It is. It, it's exactly what you guys are saying you don't about, want. We're talking Following about things. hardscape and landscape. Those are two concepts. How is it piecemeal? What do you want the hardscape to look like? And what kind of trees and plants do you want to put in the When ground? did we start talking about landscape? Well, I'm not here on behalf of the commission. I'm not allowed. This is public comment. This is public comment. comment. I'm not allowed. And I will comment to that, too. Trust, uh, Benjamin Sells here comes into our LAC meeting, and I was thrilled. I thought it was a phenomenal courtesy that he was going to show us the public unveiling before the public got to see it. You sat at our table. I said, you know, we have a big debate. We're not sure if we're really allowed to comment officially on hardscape. And you said, oh, yeah, we really want your input. And I made a joke. I said, you know, that's great. I'm like, okay, did everybody hear that? I said, make sure it gets in the minutes. And everybody laughed, and you said it again. You said, yes, we welcome your input. And so I was, I've been above board on this whole thing, and I have written emails, I think respectfully, I tried to be respectful in my dissent, which has been ignored, largely. I am not attacking this board, I am attacking, I am defending against you, Mr. Sells. I am not attacking you, I am defending against you. He came into our meeting, he said, great, give us all, give us whatever information you want as, as, a, as a commission, great. So I sent out a memo to my group, and I said, hey, next month we're going to put together a memo. We'll discuss this. We'll put it together. And you sent an email to all of us saying it's not in your purview. You can send individual comments, but you may not do this as a group, as a commission of this village. So which is it? Because which end of the mouth you're talking out of just depends on the day and the audience. And I've observed it so many times that I'm very, very comfortable saying it aloud in a very public format. Um, Let's see here. You said that we accused you in some way of having insufficient input, which was not the case that I heard from any of those sophisticated people that came and spoke. And you said, but how could that be? We're on our fourth draft. It shows the lack of experience you have in any kind of a design forum. It really does. Any person in the design industry just, just can't even can't even track with where you're coming from. Of course, there's four designs. I mean, you know. But at that point, at that point, you're saying, is this the guy we want to go with? And you guys are not being open-minded enough to put out a couple of RFPs. You don't have to put this in in January. And by the way, your date was incorrect. And I'll let you go find the date of the actual letting for this that when you have to get it in. 
and I hope that you don't move up your date. This has not been a public process. There's no way you can say it's been a public process. There's no way you can assert it's been going on for a year and all of us have been invited. The people that I spoke to, we didn't even know that we were, we thought we were invited to the public unveiling. We didn't know we were gonna be listed on the agenda. You actually said, and I would like it struck from the minutes, because it says, Ben, you actually said, these commissions, I've shown this to these commissions, they have viewed it, they have given their input, and they have vetted it. And that cannot be in the minutes, because it's untrue which at the last meeting he confirmed. You cannot say these things unless they're true. You, you, you assert that this is the 11th hour to start over and that it's going to be a death blow. That's, that, those are your words from the last, from the November 20th meeting. It's gonna be a death blow. This is how he persuades each of you on this board with these kind of, I mean, you're great. You're very persuasive, he's very powerful. Uh, oh. I have a great respect for the design process, but what's all this bantering about Olmstead? You can't banter about Olmstead. He didn't lay out the downtown. Everybody knows that. That doesn't mean he should be ignored and that the, the historical, oh my God, that the history of our village should be just disposed of in the downtown. Put your, go ahead, put your little, uh, who said it? Um, Disneyland, put your Disneyland downtown. Your design is not good. You're not a design guy. The two ladies that are working with you haven't been here long enough to understand the history of the village. I'm not sure, are you here, Sonia? Yes. I'm next to you. Um, I don't know if, what your design background is. Do you have a design background? No, no, no. Okay, she's an urban planner. That is a design background, I would call that, to some extent. Maybe not as finite. And you're not, right, Ms. Francis? No. Okay, come on. You cannot guide a firm that we are paying this kind of money as taxpayers. I want somebody coordinating with this group who is a designer, who can hold, them to, hold their nose to the grindstone. You can't do it. I couldn't do it in an economic realm. I don't have the knowledge. I couldn't do it. You can't do this, and you are too stubborn to admit to it. You have to back off and get some other designers in there and get a committee, an intelligent committee, not someone that you can slough off with a half a joke, which is ridiculous, and I'd like to never hear that again. If you get a sound committee, of course they can create a great result. I don't need a charrette or a committee, says Mr. Sells. Do you all agree with that? Does this board really have, like, do you really believe that? I mean, if you do, you know, take a vote. How about that? Take a vote. Why is he dictating and you're listening? I don't understand. And I've had a lot of respect for you. I really have. But this has clearly blown you out of the water because you're telling stories. We have respect and appreciate citizens that came tonight. But are we really going to roll the dice with the volatility of the market? Very convincing words. These are the things that compelled this board to not do as Trustee Pollack suggested. He didn't even say, let's get the RFPs. He said, let's find out what the ramifications are. Don't put all your trust in this guy. He may or may not, he may be honest and just not see it correctly. We voted for an entire board. I would love the participation of this entire board on this very, very <coughs> prominent project. Uh, let's see. In matters of taste, there's disagreement. Don't derail this. I say let's continue with Mr. Burke and give him a chance. You're not giving him a chance, you've given him a Clean slate, you're like, go, you got it. I will clear the path, you drive down the road. That's not, that's not giving him a chance. That's saying, you got it, buddy, don't worry about it. I'll make sure it happens. It's not right. It's not right in the public realm, absolutely not. Uh, Trustee Pollock says again, you know, how about an informed decision? I just, I, and he said, this isn't the first time this has been <coughs> talked about. He asserted that he begged for an RFP at the beginning of this process. The only guy who you said was a designer on this panel, and you won't listen to him. Yeah, I think this panel can do a lot of great things. Do you think in the design realm that you should listen to the design guy a little? He's real soft-spoken, but he's got a lot of intelligent comments and ideas, and you just steamroll him. Okay. Uh, all right. Our job is to empower our village to make good decisions as a group. 
our job is to empower our village to make good decisions as a group. But you don't believe in groups. So which is it? Because you can't have both. Either you think a group of people can make something great happen, or you think it's impossible and it has to be down to one man. Come on. How many, how many, because uh, I just saw Trustee Baylor and you want to run again to, to stay on the board, which is great. I think you, you do, you know, you do listen to the people. I think you try. And I, I appreciate that. But you've been on several committees, right? Have you been on commissions? Were they all useless? Was it just time wasted? Did you accomplish anything? Accomplished a lot. Hmm. Still accomplished a lot. Still accomplishing a lot. I think my commission's doing a ton. <coughs> I think your commission does a wonderful job. So why can't there be a commission that would guide this extraordinarily important project? Why is that beyond your possibilities? Every one of you has been in groups that have accomplished great things. I don't, I can't, I mean, come on. So now to counter Trustee Pollock, you came back, you said, you know what, clarification. We have a builder, a finance guy, a business person, a planner, a lawyer, an economist, an interior designer. We're a blue ribbon panel already. He says, we're not too shabby. We don't need a blue ribbon panel. I assert that you do. Yes, sir, you do. My favorite part of this, and I suppose this might be one of the biggest things that compelled me to come here tonight, is that you stated that the people that showed up last month were incited to come here by some email that I certainly never saw. And honestly, you owe every one of those people an apology, unless you know for sure that they were in on some kind of a coup against you. That was so insulting, I cannot even tell you. There was an email, I can attest to that. That's great, was I on the list? Uh, no. Am I one of the people? Was, was Jack one of the I people? I didn't ask you if you're the creator. I would like to know, I would like to know if Mr. Butler, Mr. Lupfer, Mr. Jacobs, Mr. Strait, let's see, Mr. Uh, Ms. Ms. Marsh Osga, Mr. Fournier, Mr. Buccio, Mr. Spatney, Mr. Randall, and myself, we were lumped into your statement. And you owe every one of us an apology, unless you can prove otherwise. I was not incited to come here. I was incited to come here because I wasn't able to sleep from the Wednesday before when this was uh, shown to the public and I saw that January 23rd deadline on this. So you have, you're showing it in November, you have Thanksgiving, you have Christmas, you have New Year's, and you're off and running. And you're saying give them a chance? You're saying give them the money. Let them run. Let them do what they want. This is not your backyard. You don't get to design your own patio here. This is a public realm that deserves public input. To give single individual commentary is so much less powerful. You haven't given the public a chance. I've talked to as many people as I could and they're like, geez, I didn't know that was going on until, until the public unveiling. So while you may think you've somehow expressed this to the community, I didn't know virtually nobody that I've spoken to, unless they are an insider in this government, knew this was going on and that this was like go time. We had no idea. This is not the 11th hour. If you look at the second grant, that second grant gives us, it can be pushed out till October and if Mr. President Sells here writes a letter, he can get that grant pushed out to, to a later date so that you have more time. But, Six months is, is, is a reasonable amount of time, six more months is a reasonable amount of time to get solid design, get some RFPs from different people who would love to design Riverside's downtown. Not some guy that was hired by the firm that's getting the money. It's not appropriate. Um, yeah, you may not say it's the 11th hour again, and you may not say that this has been going on for a year. You didn't even get awarded the contract until April. It's simply false. To attempt to bootstrap some kind of Olmstenian legacy to the downtown plan is a red herring, says President Sells. How's that for a slap in the face of this village? Come on. I think you said something that you had, that you had spoken to the, the museum historian. Do you know, she actually responded to me and she said, I haven't seen the plan yet. I'm not even sure exactly how she got on my thread because I just sent out a respectful letter saying, Hey, who knows about this? I 
I mean, shall I go on? Is there any question you have? Because honestly, I have talked to people from, oh, here's a nice one. So this is from the, the engineer who is um, Bureau Chief of Local Roads and Streets, District 1, Illinois Department of Transportation. He can't find any correspondence on this job. There's one letter to Ed Bailey, who is not, who is not on this project. Now, it may be because there was a, a, a combining of the two grants, so you know, there may be something there going on there. It says, you receive your, your award letter from Springfield. You contact local roads chief engineer. He doesn't know anything about it. Why not? Why not? Their contact is still Peter Scalera. You want the money? Talk to these guys. They hold your money, and they don't know who's in charge. They don't know who the contact is in Riverside. Shame on you. The whole board should know something about this. Manager Francis, what is going on here? Contact local pro or contact programming liaison to initiate a certain form, local agency agreement, and tip record. Perform consultant selection process. Here you go, Mr. Sells. And board. Advertise request for proposals, short list, interviews, evaluation of those designs. Then you do a selection. Then you do fee negotiation. This is not my list. This is the guy who holds the money. You want the money? Talk to this guy. Prepare and submit draft consultant agreement to District 1 Local Roads guy, this guy. He doesn't even know whose contact is in the village of Riverside. And you guys, you're saying that you think this is the best design and you have the 11th hour and this guy doesn't know your name? Come on. Following consultant agreement approval and execution, six to weeks, eight to weeks after that, project design phases can begin. Why are you rushing this design? Why is this firm that you call professional the only firm that you will deal with in the design phase? Do you have an answer for that? This is your opportunity to speak. Do you have an answer for that? I think you I owe it to this to community. This. Mm -hmm. I have checked with our staff and there has been no further contact with Riverside on this project since last spring. There was a kickoff meeting in July, I believe. So, in case you guys have not understood this from the many people that came in here, when you create a design, I don't care if it's for a house, my God, my kitchen had four designs, and I have a bungalow, it's tiny. I have a great kitchen. I had at least four designs that I laid out. It's a kitchen, it's nothing. You start grand, you start with something that you cannot, you, you probably can't even attain, because it will change, and you know that, of course it will. And then you peel back the onion, and what is revealed is great. What you are doing out here, you have this as another friend of yours, if I understand right, and very knowledgeable divine, he's an architect. He said, this is student work. That rendering, though, to a design professional tells a great deal. I'm not fooled by the rendering. That was another great insult. You said, oh, I think it's, I think it's the rendering. It's not the rendering. That might be unfortunate for people who are not in the industry. I can look at that and see what they do and do not have figured out. That is not a complete design. It is not figured out. I talked to the lady at the Department of Transportation. She said, well, the best thing to do is have a great design going in. Because if you have to alter it, then it starts getting a little dicey. Get a great design before you get the money. You have the time. If you don't believe me, that's fine. That's great. Do what Trustee Pollock said. Have your staff find out. Have them lay it out for you so you know what you're dealing with. Get it in writing, by the way. There's a train station project that's going on, and that's what Mr. Bailey is currently focused on. There's also these two streetscape things going on. So he, they think that this, this uh, Tammy Svercheck, she's the one that, that coordinates with our village all the time from the Department of Transportation. She's like, yeah, I should, uh, I should find out about that project and see where they're at. She doesn't know anything about it. Who exactly have you been talking to related to the grant and when?
honestly, I could go on and on. How about this one? How about, how about what is our status as a historic community and what are the rules for that? Do you know? Did you know that going in? Does Mr. Burke know that and his team? What are the rules for Riverside? And I would like one clarification. Can my group put together a memo as a commission or are we still denied that? Mr. Sells, please tell me. The Landscape Advisory Commission, just like any commission, is entitled to put forward any kind of input to this board that they wish. What I would express to you under our ordinance, which is what gives you your official authority, is that the B2 is not, does not fall under the purview of the Landscape Advisory Commission. And what commission does that fall under in the ordinance? What commission? Planning and Zoning Commission. Planning, planning and Zoning Commission. Yes. And so that was taken away from the Preservation Commission as well and given to the Planning and Zoning Commission only. So really, officially, we're only supposed to comment as a commission on this if we are on the Planning and Zoning Commission. I would say technically that's true. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean your input's not welcome otherwise. Ah, but that is the other side of the mouth talking. What, what, I would like to know, well, I'm holding you accountable, sir, because I'm not sure who else will. And I don't know what else to do. I mean, honestly, I, I'm not a politician. You know, I'm, I'm a citizen, and I see some things being handled poorly. I think it's been poorly managed. I don't think it's like corruption or anything awful like that, but I think this is being handled very poorly from a management perspective. It's clear to me that that's true. We do not have the time as, as commissions or, or residents to go over this. We don't have the plans for this. If you push this out in January, it will be without any review of the public. This is all holiday season. It's completely unfair and it's completely unnecessary. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the board? Hearing none, we'll move on to the reports of village officers. First up is the pre president's report. Really the only thing that I wanted to report this evening is that the various comments and input that was received at the town hall meeting and since have been forwarded on to Burke Engineering. They are taking that into account as they start to refine the streetscape project. And when they have uh, further draft and further render renderings that we provided to the public and to the board. And that is all I have. Ms. Francis. The only item I have is with regard to the First Avenue construction. It is estimated that it will be completed by the end of December. They're currently doing striping and finishing up the resurfacing and installation of lighting at this moment. That's it. Any questions about that? Moving on to the approval of the consent agenda. Are there any items that any trustee needs to have removed for discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask for a motion and a second to approve. Motion by Ms. Hamilton, second by Mr. Foley. Please call the roll. Trustee Sussman. Aye. Trustee Hamilton. Aye. Trustee Gallery. Aye. Trustee Collins. Aye. Trustee Foley. Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Does anyone have a trustee liaison report this evening? We have no reports of departments or commissions. Next up is ordinances and resolutions. This is a continuing discussion. Uh, on the remand from the Planning and Zoning Commission regarding the signed ordinance update. Ms. Apt. All righty. Get my notes in order here. Um, you all should have at your seats um, an updated um, uh, non-conforming sign list. This is updated per the recommendations from the Planning and Zoning Commission. So this is uh, the status of the signs you've previously seen and what their um, conforming and non-conforming status will be based on the um, Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation from the remand. So uh, the board's been discussing the sign ordinance amendments um, in October and November. At your November 6th meeting, um, you reviewed each of the recommendations and suggested the following changes. Um, that we do not change the restrictions on the hours of illumination, that we do not require permits for sandwich board signs, and that we increase the maximum projection for blade signs to 42 inches, but still restrict the signs to a maximum three foot width. 
Um, and then you remanded the following items to the Planning and Zoning Commission for further discussion and consideration. And that was pro the prohibition of change of a copy for sign sandwich board signs, um, except for the dry erase and chalkboard type. Um, have them reconsidering prohibiting, prohibiting wall signs on raceways. You asked for further clarification on why they restricted internal illumination to silhouette illumination and also um, to reconsider the maximum wall sign area for larger single user buildings. And you also asked them to reconsider the amortization schedule based on Trustee Pollock's recommendation that he brought before you at that said meeting. So uh, just to kind of start off, um, after the November 6th meeting, I did receive a couple of comments from trustees that in my discussion of rear wall signs, I did not bring up the condition that the businesses must meet the zoning ordinance regulations for screening of trash dumpsters and the landscaping around the parking lot. Um, that is like, um, similarly we have the restriction on there that their signs have to meet the code in order to get that additional signage um, for the rear wall sign. There's also a restriction in there that their screening needs to be there and their landscaping needs to be there if it's required by the zoning ordinance. And I forgot to go over that. I had it on my list, but I didn't explain it at the meeting. So I wanted to bring that up to you, bring it to your intention, and apologize for accidentally skipping over that particular piece at the last uh, meeting. So if you do want to discuss that at all, we, we can discuss that. I know I accidentally kind of skipped over that one at the meeting. But on to the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation. Um, for sandwich board signs, um, they were, they recommended keeping the proposed regulations and design standards as they recommended them. Um, that means that they are continuing to say they do not want the slide in changeable copy. They only want changeable copy to be in the form of dry erase and or chalkboard uh, type faces for the uh, sandwich board signs. For raceways, they recommended keeping the proposed regulations as is. They weren't comfortable with not being able to see a proposed raceway sign um, by just having design standards in the code. Um, and in the end, they decided that the variation process was available and a feasible option for businesses with a raceway sign currently or new businesses that would like to use a raceway. For silhouette illumination, um, the commissioners explained the reasoning behind their decision to choose the silhouette illumination over facelit <coughs> illumination being the silhouette illumination complements the architecture of the building and allows the architecture to shine while still providing the identification that the signage provides. Facelit signs, on the other hand, are just about the signs. They are a much more aggressive type of signage. As part of the discussion, the commissioners also brought up some discrepancies in the definitions and recommended that um, it be made clear that silhouette illumination is a type of internal illumination by removing the last sentence in the internal illumination definition and add internally illuminated rather than illuminated to the definition of silhouette signs, of a silhouette illuminated signs, I should say. <clears throat> the next one is the maximum wall sign area for single user buildings. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommended creating a different maximum for single user buildings only um, based on wall area. The wall area would exclude windows and doors and then a maximum percentage of the remaining area would be allowed for the wall sign. Unfortunately, I was unable to really find any other communities that did it that way and really find any definitions for wall area or sign wall area that excluded those, um, those elements um, to really use as a base for creating these new requirements. Um, in my staff report, I had made a recommendation to allow one square foot of wall signage per one lineal foot of frontage, not to exceed a maximum of 75 square feet, for single user buildings or multi-use buildings with a single commercial user that encompasses the entire ground floor, um, so long as that frontage is more than 40 feet. Um, I informed the Planning and Zoning Commission of my findings or lack of findings and um, pulled them individually on my initial recommendation and confirmed that they were in support of that recommendation. So um, I, that's something for you too. That would stand, I guess, is there other recommendation, they're okay with staff's recommendation on that um, accommodation for single user buildings or multi-use buildings that have a single user there on the ground floor um, to allow for a little bit more signage. And then as for the amortization schedule, the Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed Trustee Pollock's recommendation um, for two different amortization schedules based on either the 2005 code change or this proposed 2014 change, as well as the possibility of um, 
having uh, conditional signs. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommended utilizing the proposed amortization schedules for s the ones for signs that were made non-conforming by the 2005 ordinance and the ones that would be made non-conforming by the 2014 ordinance, which would be that anything that was made non-conforming by the 2005 ordinance change would be held to the amortization schedule um, that they had originally proposed. So that would give, depending on the value of the sign, up to five years to bring the sign into conformance. Um, the other for the 2014 update signs that they would have 10 years to bring their sign into conformance. Um, that would kind of mimic what the signs that became non-conforming in 2005 have had to bring their signs into conformance. So it would kind of balance out. Um, so those two they did recommend, um, recommend to you. Uh, they were not comfortable with um, the conditional signs. Um, they decided that many of the proposed standards in there were already very similar to what was existing in our sign variation standards, and so they did not recommend for the conditional signs, but rather said if there are signs that are still non-conforming, the variation process is available to those, to those businesses. Um, they did, however, state that they are in favor of the um, proposed grant program that um, Trustee Pollock had proposed as part of the amortization schedule with helping out with the cost of the signs if they do the work within the first year or two. Um, however, they understand that that's a policy decision by the board, and so they were not quite sure whether they should actually be voting on that or not, um, but they did want to express that they were in favor of that. Let's see, the Planning and Zoning Commission also recommended that I provide you with some pictures of less attractive facelit signs to better illustrate their concerns about internal illumination. So I provided you with copies of the pictures that I provided the Planning and Zoning Commission and a few new photos of less attractive facelit signs for your consideration. So that is in your packet. Um, let's see here. Yes. So on the one side is the signs that I showed the Planning and Zoning Commission and on the other side are the less attractive facelit signs for your uh, consideration. And also I wanted to let you know, because a couple of trustees called me on it, um, and apparently the copier did not show some of the things in red, um, but on page seven of the draft ordinance, um, that is 4-3-5 prohibited signs, um, this is part of the general sign regulations, and unfortunately the copy didn't pick up the edits in red of what the changes were to this um, section. Um, I had to, in the previous draft text you saw, I had only made changes to the prohibited signs under the B2 and did not realize that they were, the signs that we were proposing were also prohibit under these general prohibitions for the entire sign ordinance. So we had to make a couple of additions to accept out blade signs because they do project over the public right-of-way um, and then also the uh, sandwich board signs because uh, it has a prohibition for um, portable signs. So we added um, to A1 that um, it would be accept as provided in sections and it has 4-3-7 and then we added in 4-3-13 which is the B2 regulations for signs and 4-3-14, which is the B1 regulations for signs. So that projecting signs or blade signs um, would be accepted out of that. Also for number seven, um, we added the language um, other than sandwich board signs as provided in section 4-3-13. And that's the, again, the B2 section that, and it, within that it talks about sandwich board signs in there. So I apologize that the copier didn't pick up the red type on that one and, and sent that through all in black so you didn't necessarily see the change and I think that about covers everything and now it's in your hands I'm happy to answer any questions that you have concerns I, we have a couple of plan commissioner planning and zoning commissioners here I think that um, if you have any questions about that meeting they can answer your questions as well I'd like to know if you've received any calls recently from the business owners about this and what the general reaction is. No, I have not. I think the last. Alex, I'd like to know if you've received any calls. I have not. No, we have not received that. I know you're not going to have it tonight. So, 
Yeah, right after the last board meeting before the remand, I have heard from a couple of businesses, but I haven't heard anybody really since then. So I, I have heard from businesses, specifically Riverside Foods, actually I talked to this evening, um, and they um, are excited about the grant program and the opportunities that that will bring with regard to the signs and bringing certain things in compliance. So with regard to that, I think as long as those particular um, changes are married with that program, I think it will be well received. Mm -hmm. So I thought what we would do is just, let's just go through it page by page as we've done in the past. But Ms. App, since you're standing beside that thermostat, can I turn it up? Can you turn it up? Oh, it is, okay. it is, <laughs> my hands are like ice up here. So why don't we start with uh, the variations? We are not voting on this tonight. We are not voting. This is just a general discussion. And we're going to work through the language tonight. And then we'll have uh, an order brought back to us at our next meeting for a formal, formal vote. Because none of the changes we talked about last time aren't included. Are not, are My not understanding included. is you'll be doing it all at once, right, mm -hmm. Mike? Right. right. And then there were some other things that have come up since then, for, and, as we'll, and we'll get to it with regard to uh, sidewall signs and things like that that we'll need to work out some language uh, as well. So are you so, using one of, we have three sets of minutes for this. Yeah. <laughs> Which um, one where I, are you? I, I, let's start with the actual section 4316, the variations. Four, three, sixteen, and uh, just go through the page. Right. We weren't proposing any changes to that. There, there were no changes uh, shown in this. The only thing I wanted to bring up was a suggestion, I believe, by Trustee Valerie at the last meeting about the possibility of waiving uh, filing fees. Uh, about what? waiving filing fees for waiving filing fees for for signs that were would be made non-conforming by whatever ultimate ordinance this board passes. Yes. Uh, yes, currently there is a $250 uh, filing fee for a signed variation application. So uh, are you talking about a variation application or for a new sign? I think he's talking about this variation. Oh, a vari I'm sorry. I thought yeah, so so if a sign that is then, if a sign was conforming oh, yeah, and was out. made non-conforming yeah. by whatever ordinance you ultimately pass, that if they wanted to come in for a variation, they would not have to, they would not have to pay the filing fee. Variation. That wording is right before the draft ordinance. Yes. If you're looking for it in your packet. So it's going to be after it's the after business the signs, but before the ordinance. Mm -hmm. It's 4316 oh, variations. Yeah. Perfect timing. Mr. Pollock. How was the concert? Outstanding. Excelsior <laughs> Junior High is a wonderful music program. <laughs> um, we're just starting a discussion of the signed ordinance. Great. And That's we're starting great. out uh, with the variations page. Okay. We're just going to go through and have a general discussion. So, Mr. Ballerine, did you want to revisit that that topic? Well, um, so many pieces of so many pieces of this puzzle. It's kind of hard to figure out where to start. Um, well, first of all, if a sign becomes non-conforming um, and the the sign owner or businesses wants to come in front of the the planning the planning and zoning commission to ask for a variance again, I think the fee should be waived. Um, and is there? Let me just say, is there a consensus on that's that fine with me. we want to do that? Okay. So what was his that if, if a sign becomes not conforming pursuant to whatever ordinance is ultimately passed, somebody wants a variation, they would not have to pay a filing fee. That's right. So Mr. Mars, if you can look at that. Are there any other issues with regard to the variations section first? Okay. So now let's move to the body of the ordinance itself, which is after the United Dental Group signed. I'm not sure whether that's supposed to be a, a pretty one or a bad one, so I'm not going to opine about that. Uh, and the actual text starts on page two under definitions. And I know that there had been some discussion about the definition of uh, box sign. You know, when, you know, I. I at the last meeting, uh, when we talked about, you know, various different signs, 
Um, Doug, you made you made a mention that you know when we talk about grandfathering, you say, you know, you've had several of your neighbors saying that we have to live with box signs for the rest of our lives. So, you know, I, I see a lot of this this work that has been done done to you know to to address a certain sign. And in the in the in the in the meantime, has had a um, an effect on a lot of different things, and I think a lot of good signs. For example, you know, I think box signs in themselves are not necessarily um, bad if they're an integral part of the building. Um, and I'll use Aunt Diana's and uh, Arcade. Arcade Jewelers as an example. Those those box signs are 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 I think very well done, and they're they're. They're underneath the the, the 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 entryway, and I think they're they're an integral part of the building. They, they don't protrude from the face of the building, so I think there's a better way of crafting, you know, what box signs. You know, we shouldn't just lump every box sign into a box sign. I, I guess I have a different point of view. I appreciate that, and I agree with you on those two signs. I think that that rather than crafting it for those two signs. We've now waived the fee for a variation, and those would be two great, let me finish, okay. that, those would be two great examples of being able to apply for a variation. How, 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 is, how is Aunt Diana's, or how is any, I only look at really one business, maybe two businesses, that could say, could go through this variation process and, and, and do hardship. I mean, how can, how can Aunt Diana say it's a hardship? They could put a sign, up on top of their, up on top of their, uh, above their glass. They could put lighting. They, they don't have to. Well, the, the, the issue of hardship, maybe we should have the attorneys comment on that because the findings, the standards for sign variation are much different from zoning variation. The zoning variation is required to show hardship. Particular hardships to a sign order because of unique circumstances or unusual conditions pertaining to the construction, alteration, maintenance, repair, remodeling, specific sign. But, but I think it's a matter of law, and it maybe our code's not this way, but from my experiences, that the standard is the bar is much lower for a sign than a, a zoning variation. Well, again, it's hard. I mean, there, there is no common law of hardship on sign variations. What you've done is you've taken a a concept from real estate principles and grafted it on to sign ordinances, which typically have been part of zoning codes, but most municipalities have taken them out now. But basically what I, you know, hardship to me in a sign case is one where someone is making a plea that this sign doesn't do detriment to the aesthetics principles of the sign code and is the best sign for my business. So to force me to comply with the code would, it's very subjective, but would, would not be good for my business. Right? This is the, to show it's, this is the best sign for my business. And if you go along with that, any other sign works some kind of nebulous detriment, and so you have hardship. But, but I think Trustee Pollock is right in the sign area of the bar is, if it exists, it's much lower. And I would add to that too, that in relation to the signs you mentioned, Aunt Diana's, uh, uh, I forget the other arcade. arcade. I think you can quantify that difference because those signs are recessed. They're not attached to the wall of the building. Right, I, that's what I'm saying. Why? And so I think on that basis, that unique, because they're so unique, I think it would be easy, this is my opinion, I think it would be easy to show a variation, the standards for a variation for that type of sign because it clearly, to, in my mind, meets the intent of the code. It doesn't look anything like a traditional box sign and it's recessed, you know, it, 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 it has a whole different character. Um, and yes, that, you know, I, I can hear you thinking that it's still <laughs> Yeah, but that doesn't address variance. the hardship so, component, but the but, hardship component would be addressed by showing right. not only that you meet the spirit of the ordinance aesthetically, but that also, this is why I think this is the best sign for my business, this kind of business, my business, you know, that sort of thing. And if you have that in the record, you, you've got a, a, a process that you can uphold. Can I ask a follow-up to, to what Joe was saying, though? Are, are Doug or Lance or Mike, 
Are recess signs generally, I mean, is there some, I hate to say there might be something to what you said, Joe, so I'll just go from there. Um, uh, is there it's something, the holidays. <laughs> I, I, I mean, is there something about a recess sign, because both these examples are recess signs, that um, should be in the code, or is, are we just lucky that these two recess signs that are? Attractive. Yeah. I totally agree, and that was my point. Was yeah. if it is that easy to define it, how it would be the variance? Why can't we define it so the code calls for it? I agree. I don't like the idea at all of taking two signs, which it seems that several people agree are perfectly acceptable, making them non-conforming, and then making them apply for a variance. It seems kind of backwards to me. May, may I offer some possible language under the definition of box sign on page two? Um, how about something like a face-mounted forward projecting sign? Face-mounted forward projecting. That doesn't really answer my it question. Does, I don't though. think I, it I covers still, it I, I asked a question, and I just wondered if anybody, it, I mean, uh, what's the risk of putting that kind of language in there? As I said, we're fortunate that these are nice signs that are, are recessed, but I'm curious if, if these are more exceptions to the rule. Before we put any other language in there, I'd, I'd like to hear people's, uh, the professional's point of view on that. I'm sorry, can you ask well, it again? Yeah, because, because I Joe, we're, we're saying that there's something about these two particular signs and the fact that they're recessed that makes them somehow different than the than the box signs that we're that we've been talking about or this de definition. And my question is: Is there is, is that true about all recess signs? Or are we making, or, or are we just lucky that those two signs are attractive? And I'd like to know if there's something that should distinguish recess signs from, recess box signs from other box signs. Is there an answer to that? I, I, I don't know that there is aesthetically. I think box signs traditionally have, are suspect because they're cheaper. They're, because you don't need to, like signs that have each letter crafted and, and illuminated by whatever they so they tend to be cheaper alternatives and then within that genre it's much more likely you're going to have more distasteful signs yeah. and and so I, I guess I'm I would be concerned about writing a code for two signs in town I would prefer that even if it's an inconvenience we're not it's an inconvenience of filling out a form and coming to a meeting there's no monetary cost involved that we not choose to two signs, that we not write the code for two signs, because there will there could be other signs that will be less desirable. But, but how do you how do you um, how do you allow Aunt Diana's and I'm, I'm and I shouldn't be using names, but but I, you have to, I'm trying to put signs with 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 places because there's actually three of those because the 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 unit next to K's has the same type of sign, it just doesn't have a tenant. Right. Um, and it's someday, part of the design of the building. Yeah, someday there will be a, a tenant in there and hopefully, I'm sorry? It's a part of the architecture of the building. That's right. Okay. Um, the, 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 and maybe that's the way we, way we go about this, but I don't know if Diane, Diana's could be considered part of the architecture of the, the building. I think those two possibly could. But how do you, how do you allow Aunt Diana's to come up and say, you know, it's the bright sign for my building because um, it's pretty. Because we can't, you can't say that. And you have somebody that has a less, uh, a protruding box sign that is, is obviously sign kind of the target here, um, come up and say the exact same thing. This is, you know, I, I could see somebody come up and say, I do not own this building, I am a tenant. My landlord, be it good, bad, or indifferent, will not allow me to change the electrical, will not allow me to do what you're asking me to do to conform. So <coughs> I have to stay with this box. I don't have an option. Well, what's the answer to that when the landlord says we can't, we won't let you bring it into code? Well, I mean, the answer is it's the property is not in compliance. The landlord ultimately. So you have the option of issuing a citation. Yeah. To the landlord. Yeah. So there. I, I, I want to kind of try to put this in context. I don't know if this would be helpful or not, but what I'm hearing, both the Planning and Zoning Commission and here, is, is more agreement than disagreement. I'm hearing, you know, 
we all know what we like and what we don't like. And there's there's pretty broad consensus and uh, on that, on what we like and don't like. I think the problem, the the reason we're struggling is that we eliminated, and and and, and I think we should eliminate the requirement that every sign come before the plan commission. So we've basically eliminated, we're losing a lot of control. Um, and so we have to try to write a code that covers all circumstances, and, and when it, especially with a sign that is basically an aesthetic thing, you know, at its core, it's an aesthetic structure. Uh, we have to try to write a code that covers all cases, and there's no, I don't think there's any way to do that, quite frankly. So why don't we go back and allow it to go in front of the planning commission? So we that's what that's one of the alternatives I had proposed. The planning commission didn't recommend this, but I think there's there's two alternative two alternative two middle ground alternatives. One is that we just rely on the variation process. I guess there's several several alternatives. I'll throw out more than two. Just rely on the variation process, and that's what the planning commission is recommending. Just you know, they could go through variation. Uh, another thing is the conditional sign category that I had recommended, which is really just another way of saying a third alternative, which is redefine hardship for sign variations as described yeah. by Mr. Molina. Just amend that part of the code so it's very clear. That a side variation isn't this overwhelming, impossible thing to get, but that we're very specific, and I, I like the, the words that Mr. Molina used in describing that. And then it's clear, it's in our code, that for a variation, you don't have to meet hardship. What you have to do is show that it's the best design for that particular building and that particular business. And that's the general standard for a sign variation. And, and then, also would do would violate the basic principles of the sign, right, the spirit, right. if you will. Right. You know, and, and that gives the business and the property owner options. They can just design a sign that completely complies with code and get a permit and be done with it. Or if they want a different sign, a better sign, they have the option of designing something like Fiori or Aunt Diana's and saying, look, this is really attractive. And, and you should approve this variation because it fits this building, it fits this business. And you know, the ones we're talking about, we've got, I think, unanimous agreement on the Planning and Zoning Commission and the board that those are attractive signs. And so to say that we'd never agree on that, I don't, I don't think that's accurate. I think we would agree because we, we already do agree. I, um, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> What I what I what I what I don't like, what I don't agree with, is to make these businesses jump through the hoops. I mean, we've already we have spent years debunking the the fallacy that you know we are you know anti-business and we don't you know we make it things hard. I mean, I I was talking to one business business owner the other day and said, how, you know how how was it when you went and got your site? I mean, it was it was hell. Yeah, and it's not even a, it's not even a big sign. It's terrible. I mean, and that shouldn't be, you know, that shouldn't be. And what we're doing is, I think we're, we're it, with all good intentions, we're going back there. And I don't want to go back there. I mean, I want I want I want people to 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 to, to come into town and, and feel welcome and, and you know and, and get up and running. I mean, I was talking to a, a, a restaurateur who's who was talking about a town up north, you know, they're, they're giving away, you know, easements, they're doing it just to attract businesses in the town. They're making it as much as, as easy it can be to open up a business in town. And it just seems like we're making it, we're just making it harder. You know, we, and we, we need to, we need to craft it. And, and, and the job that was done here is, is, you know, is, is a yeoman's task and, and it is a great job. And, and, and I think what they've tried to do is, is, do exactly what you said, and that's try to encompass everything. Um, but I, you know, I, 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 it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be easier. It's got to be well, easier for Fior to put up a sign that gets more compliments than anyone, we, and, and 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 not have to go through a process like this. We are making it easier. There's no question about that. I don't, I don't just, see just the way it's written now. All of those signs have to come before the Planning and Zoning Commission and the village board, every one of them. 
Really, is it the village no, board no, too? No, just no, no, sorry, no, just no, planning and zoning commission. Now they go all of them, right? even if they conform. So we're eliminating that hoop, and every business, every single one, will have the option of not coming to the planning and zoning commission or the board. They will have that option. Period. No questions asked. You 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 get a sign that complies with the code. Here's your permit. And, and I think our code is too restrictive. That, so that, it's only the ones that want more or want something beyond that. So I guess what you're arguing for then is to permit outright raceway signs or well, I think raceway signs could be permitted with the prop with the right language. And um, I know that the when I was at the, the planning committee when the planning meeting they were toying around it <coughs> and I think their their hang up and can I Dave McGill are here they can we, talk better. Can we with. start meshing can we stick to the box sign? And, and try to get that resolved before we, before we let ourselves get pulled into raceways. And well, I think it's all part of the same thing, but yeah, I, I, okay, that's fine. you know, I, but if you want to stay with box signs, I think we should we should allow flush mounted or some a way we can we can we can draft that language. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're not going to like what I'm going to say because it, it is all <laughs> encompassing and it is not just specific to box signs, but. I've really struggled with this issue this week, and um, you know I knew that this was coming. Um, some people had requested, you know, that we a lot of work did go into this process, and that we respect the planning and zoning commission's work, and, and uh, you know, respectfully go along with that. And I just really struggled with this, and I and I finally figured out what the problem is. And I think, you know, I disagree with a lot of the things that they have in here. And, but I have said before, I will stick by commissions because I believe in the process and I believe that we need to support their work. So even though I totally disagree with the back sign issue, I will go along with that. However, as a trustee, I have more than one hat. So from a big planning and zoning commission, I think that this is perfectly okay. I'm gonna disagree with some of the things, but I'm not gonna argue with them, okay? I will go along with their recommendations. However, when it comes to the current business signs, I have another hat that I have to put on as a trustee, and that's someone who supports businesses in this town. And as Joe said, we are trying to get away from this. You know, we keep on saying we support businesses, and then we're going to tell them that they all need to go buy new signs, or that 11 of them, or whatever the number is. I can't do that, because when I put on that hat, it says I need to do whatever is possible for these businesses to survive. And every step that we put in their path that makes them spend more money on something that they don't want to spend money on, is going to hurt their business. And so with that hat on, I say I'm in favor of grandfathering all current signs, and we can go with the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendations on the other ones. That's my personal opinions. Other comments? Um, I, I just, um, speaking to something that Doug said, and it makes me wonder if indeed the Planning and Zoning Commission and the trustees are in, um, in we, we all believe that certain signs are attractive and would receive a variance. Why can't the Planning and Zoning Commission just say we would like these accepted right now? They've reviewed every single sign in town. Why, why do we have to render certain signs out of conformity? Why can't Anti Annas and, and, and I'm right now I'm just speaking to box signs, but Anti Annas and, um, uh, arcade, why can't they just be given a pass as, as if they came before the commission, we would have approved them. They've talked about them. If indeed you say they all believe they were attractive signs, why can't we do that? Why can't they? Well, because the code specifically doesn't allow for box signs. So even if they were to come in Wait a minute. and ask for a box sign, Planning and Zoning currently couldn't approve that sign. I mean, I, I, I can address that. You can't do it legally because the code has to be written in general terms that provide rules for everybody. And you can't have a set of rules and then say, these are the rules except for these locations. Okay. Unless there's a process and you can't, I mean, the only way to do that is by grandfathering everybody that's okay. not conforming. It's, you can't single out favored spots in legislation except through a case, anything case by case has to have some kind of additional process to meet the standards. The, way, the only thing you can do 
is to grandfather non-conforming sites. Well, that's, or, I guess, or, what I was thinking about doing. Okay, and that's why I'm in favor of grandfathering all of them, whether we want to call them ugly science or oh, pretty science, because... I don't agree with that. Because I think that once we do the streetscape and once... I mean, you can do this one of two ways. We can either beautify the downtown, and then these businesses are going to want their business to look good, or we can start with them. And so which do we start with, the chicken or the egg type of thing? So I think once we fix the downtown, when it looks nice, and then we have a program to help share costs, we can go to those ones that are particularly offensive to some people and say, hey, we'd like to help you out with this. What do you think about putting up a new sign so that your place looks good? You know, I think you can do it that way. So if I, if I can just suggest procedurally, um, I mean, that's, you know, we, can have, we can have that. I'm not, sorry, Mr. Torres, did you want to say something? Oh, I was just going to add on to Lance and Trustee Hamilton's comment that the, the other alternative is the one you already talked about, which is figuring out a way to define box signs that accepts the ones that you have. Right. And I'd like to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if I can say, I mean, before we get to the issue you raise, I would think that we would want to go through here first, and let's see at the end of the day how many non-conforming signs we're talking about and what non-conforming signs we're right. talking about. But my and the reason why I brought it now is because I'm not going to disagree with what planning and zoning. I will support their decisions on these individual issues. Because I believe that that's in their purview and I will support what they thought because I think it's a matter of opinion. But you don't, but you don't support the recommendation I on do the not support. I do not support the amortization because I think that that involves another element that is not a planning and zoning issue. So, but it is a planning and zoning. No, issue, but in my it? mind, it also there's other influences, and, and the business community is one of the influences, and in my protection of their businesses. So, planning and zoning commission has that same concern. I would hope. Yeah, and and so I mean, it, it is clearly an issue that's in their purview. It's in the side. Oh, I'm not saying it's not in their purview. I'm just saying that my responsibility is not only to them in this case; it's also to the business. So is theirs. Yeah, can, can okay, we so do we it? go back. Let's go back. Um, let me try it again. <laughs> With regard to making a definition of box sign that would that would handle this. So what about this idea of a face-mounted forward projecting sign? <coughs> I mean, it's a, a definition a, of okay. of what the, of the kind of box sign that can, we're talking about. Can we about. defer can, or can we limit by what we're we've, we've been discussing this now for 15 minutes can we do this right well i would say um probably if we want to allow for box sign a specific type of box sign i.e the aunt diana's or the arcade type of sign where it's mounted it's kind of under mounted under the soffit that kind of thing um, what you're going to have to look into is not prohibiting box signs not necessarily even changing the definition but it's going to be incorporating design standards like we did for wall signs and the other things under um, the permitted sign type section so you would do something like um, signs box signs would be permitted however they have to be mounted under the soffit so they do not project any further than the face of the building and I think the other thing that's nice about the arcade sign and about the Aunt Diana sign that's different than perhaps like a pre-hop sign is that when it's illuminated, the background is opaque. So only the light is coming through the lettering. And so that distinguishes it from some of the other signs. Huh. So I think what you need to do, and a lot of other communities do this, is they put design standards on box signs. Box signs are permitted, however, they must have a metal or um, completely opaque background material you know we could add on there a similar kind of thing where a box sign is only permitted provided it is mounted under a soffit and does not protrude any I, closer, I, have a, I guess any I have a question for the, the lawyers and how how does handling it definitionally differ from what Ms. Abt is saying if you change well, because the well, definition yes. will still apply to every box sign but it won't any longer apply to the Hans Ayanas or the Arcade Jewelers because they're written out of the definition. Yes, I'll be left like in sort of a limbo. I mean, it, since you, it does make sense, really, f legally and, and, and I think philosophically, if, you, if there's a specific sign that you like under limited circumstances, you'd lay out, they're permitted, Here's here's the limit. So it's better to do it the way I, she's described. Yeah, I, yes. yeah, I think so. Then to name certain signs. I, I would suggest that we give 
Director Abt a chance to grab right. some language yeah. and bring it back to us. I, okay. I mean, some of the language you just used, Sonia, I like that. I, I mean, the lighting is critical, and, and the fact that though they have, only the letters are transparent mm -hmm. and the recessed nature and below the window line, all those things. Maybe there's a way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So you I mean, might be skeptical, but okay. I think it's I mean, well frankly, the lighting right. thing is a big thing, the opaque yeah. background. Yeah. And that's, that's fairly common. Um, a lot of communities do restrict box. They'll allow box signs. However, they have to have the, the opaque background. So, I mean, that's a fairly common restriction out there. And I think also where Arcade is, I believe that that whole sign banner is part of the design of that building. It probably that is. That it was intended. To intended to ha have the signs in it. So I think there should be some language that covers something like that as well. Okay. I, what we don't want to see is someone mounting a box sign underneath the building, you know. <laughs> well, I think you can take care of that with height restrictions because those box signs could not come down within a certain height. But the opaque part you're talking well, about. You wouldn't want them to cover, the, we don't allow signs to like cover a door or a window. Right. So uh, I think a traditional box sign would probably be a lot. Too well, well, they're typically okay. a lot. Right. Okay, so we're okay with staff so, working on yeah. that language. Okay. Okay. Anything else on page two? <laughs> 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 Moving along to Wait, page three. Can we, can we talk about the opaque part? Because is if if are we allowing them to illuminate those signs? Yeah. Yeah. If we yeah. would. Okay. I just. <coughs> yeah. If you would like me to. Okay. I mean, so one I mean, is illuminated. The other one they don't yeah. illuminate. So. No, that that wouldn't prohibit illumination. It would prohibit the illumination from. Leading out right. through candles, the background, fifty candles yeah. or whatever. Right. Yeah. Okay. I would just add one one more direction. I would also suggest you put those pictures of those signs in the sign ordinance as examples, because I, I think it's always best to show Absolutely. an example of what you want. Yeah, right. and then legally you can do that. Lot. It's like there's zoning now where they have what do they call that? Where the zoning codes show. What, right. What's the name for that, Doug? Oh, I can't. You would or maybe, I, we, yeah. maybe we can like but there's crop. A, Pictures. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. but anyway, it is legally you can you can do that. I forget it's, it's much more effective. Yeah. To sh like we did on the sandwich board signs. Right. I mean, we put in the ordinance. We put examples. Here's uh -huh. what we mean. <laughs> as we did with the blade signs as well. Yeah. So okay. we can do that for. for this. So continuing okay. on with definitions. Anything okay. else on three page three? Page. Um, the only thing I would bring up is what the Planning and Zoning Commission brought up is that for um, internal illumination sign, that that second sentence should be struck just to make it clear that silhouette illumination um, is allowed. Is in inter is internal illumination. So if somebody wanted to do that type of so that would allow these that, silhouette yeah, that would make okay. it clear that so strike the second sentence mm -hmm. under internal illumination. That was their recommendation. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next page, page four. I just had one kind of Scribner question about, um, we define reader board, <coughs> but everywhere else in the, in the ordinance, we talk about electronic or electric reader boards. Could, should we just pick? whatever phrase we want to use. Because yes. should be I take it, reader boarding is yeah. by nature means electronic. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. But it should the same term should, should be used. used. Okay. Okay. Um, page five. Six. Oh, for page five, also the Planning and Zoning Commission had recommended for silhouette illuminated signs that it say a sign that is internally illuminated by casting or reflecting light behind the sign. That's so, consistent. That's so just to make things consistent and yeah. make it clear, you guys are okay with that. Mm -hmm. You got that? Okay. Okay, moving on to section 435, prohibited signs, page seven. Now this is for the village in general, not just for the beach. Yeah, this section applies to the that's applies what was, village wide, yeah. right. so that's why we needed it to accept out the B1 and the B2 from these um, these lists for the sandwich board signs and projecting signs because we would be allowing them in those two sections. There, yeah. Or those two districts. Okay, page eight. I had a question about page eight. Is, okay. um, is changing location altering? You mean if a, per, a business moves? Yeah. Well, if I move a sign, is oh, that oh. altering the sign? 
from like one window to another, from one side of the wall to the other side of the wall? If I move it at all, if I move a sign at all, is that an alteration of the sign? I, would, I mm -hmm. would think so. Yeah. Think so. As long so, as yeah. as long as that's the concern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Page nine. What did you say? Um, I'm sorry, what, what was the conclusion? The question, the, yes, that uh, the change of location constitutes an alteration. Page 9? Just page 9, 437 A, wall signs. Because, um, you know, I see some of these where you have the second wall sign, for example, on PNC has a second sign. First American Bank, you know, obviously it's a box sign, but it has a second sign. Um, it says wall signs may be located on the frontage of the building facing a public street and and on a building wall or walls facing. So why why for example on metal mites can't they have a sign on the side of their their building since you can see it from the street? And it also goes and says that you can have a sign in here somewhere the railroad right away. So it seems like we're saying something here <coughs> that we also say again on page 22 when we start talking about rear wall signs. Am I not reading this correctly? Right, well, or am I... get into, well, that's the, again, this uh, 437, that um, is applicable village-wide. So that's how it reads for village-wide. Then you get into further restrictions then for the B2. Um, so that's where we're going to get into primary wall signs. It's going to be page 22. 22, that yeah. That's where, it's, that's, where the, that's where it's talked about. So then until we get to... Um, 20, page 23, location. So they have to be um, located on street front orientation. All wall signs shall be oriented to face the street by being mounted on the building facade generally parallel to the street. So that, that wall there is not parallel with the street, therefore it's not part of its frontage and that's why that sign is not allowed on the side of the building. I have to wait till page up. 23 to discuss yeah. it. Apparently, yes. Okay. <laughs> it's all in there. Well, but, but to your point, I think, though, that would, re conflicts, that would apply to nine as well. I, if I get what you're saying is, when you have, you have a situation like pre-hop that's on a corner, and I think we already anticipate in here that if the building's on a corner, you can have two sides on either side. The code allows for that, yes. What about a building like Metal Lights or the old Coveney Lane building? that is not on a corner per se, but still has other walls visible from the street other than the front facade. How do we allow, do we want to allow yeah. Yeah. And I would, I would throw, there as And well. I would throw Riverside Foods in that too. Riverside Foods. Because they have a sign, it doesn't say Riverside Foods, but it says welcome, and I assume that's a sign. Well, and on their wall, it's on the St. Mary side. They could presumably, if they wanted to have a sign right. there. So that would, that's a, an issue that kind of crosses and depending on how prevalent that is, that kind of thing could be dealt with through the variation process, too, where there are unique circumstances. And again, they could point out that it's viewable from the public right of way, which is the point of the sign ordinance. And, you know, they have unique circumstances because it increases their visibility because of pedestrian traffic. Or you could try to draft language that would allow it. Well, if I may, they're going to be allowed a blade sign. I mean, PNC and Metal Mite probably, and Higgins Glass probably put signs on the side so pedestrian people can exactly. see it. Exactly. Drivers yeah. can see. Mm -hmm. They're going to be allowed blade signs, so the need for a, that those signs would be less. There's I don't. I really would advise against going to where each business can have two or three signs. I think one sign for most businesses is plus the blade sign. Is, is is sufficient. I don't know how PNC right. and Metal Mites even got those signs to begin with. They were never. <coughs> did we allow those? Or? Um, Metal Mites got their. They got a permit to replace. They had those three signs, and they got a permit to replace those three signs as is. Um, two years ago, I think. Two or three years ago. Not, not yeah, very long. 2011. Yeah. No. I mean, that's. Uh, okay. So um, I mean, there's. There's some communities that will allow side wall signs. Um, usually it's restricted to being much smaller, you know, so it would be considered like a secondary sign. So um, for our standards, we've got your primary signs and your secondary signs, and your secondary signs are much small, there's much smaller restriction, 
restriction. So your secondary sign is going to be a lot smaller than your primary sign. So if you have um, a primary wall sign, you only get a six square foot uh, secondary window sign, or you know you get just the lettering um, along the, the valence edge of an awning for your secondary sign. You don't get another you know 25 square feet of signage for your secondary sign. So typically, if you are going to allow perhaps another sign on a sidewall you would restrict the size that it could be so that it would be, be smaller than your primary signs on the front of the building. That's kind of standard practice when you start allowing them on the side that is not facing a street. And, and I would make the case that that's what the blade signs are. They're, they're basically secondary signs. But we're giving them... give you yeah. exposure, you know, not only this way, but this way. So you can read and identify the business from two different angles. That's part of the purpose of the blade sign was to... To provide that signage as you're walking but um, okay so so far we have two views we have one view that thinks that we should have allow sidewall signs we have one of you that says we should and what the rest of you think I, I, I think the thing is is we don't have that many buildings that fall into this category I mean I mean if we think about it we we I mean all the buildings that all fall buildings this, have sides all um. these buildings that have fallen in this category already <laughs> except for maybe company lane have sidewall signs already, and what, what you know what? You know, I just, I, just I, I, it, see if we can't if we can't get through some of this, I'm going to go back to exactly where Pat's going, and let's say I, I I can't do this to all these businesses. We either have to figure out a way to craft this 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 the, the wording of this to be more inclusive, because I think the signs that we have in town, some of them are very well done and need to be protected in this ordinance and, and, and need to be encouraged. And I don't think we're encouraging them. I think we're, we're, we're hindering them. And I don't, that, that's where I'm, that's where I'm, you know, that's where I'm falling. Well, I, 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 I think this is a, this is a whole new thing for me. I, I mean, I never, you know, there was no discussion on the planning and zoning commission of, of allowing more than one principal sign for a building. I think, quite frankly, the two signs that PNC has as an example, it's just sign clutter. There's no need for it. There's no benefit of having those two signs, especially when they can add a, a blade sign. Um, you know, you get too many signs and they start to defeat their own purpose. You get sign clutter and you start to, you know, you defeat the purpose of the signs because there's so many signs that, that you have you know, it's hard to identify the businesses. I, I don't. I, I don't see any way I can. Miss Hamlin. I have to say, that. I'm not a big fan of blade signs, but I'll accept them. But in any case, um, is there any reason why we couldn't consider letting a business that has a significant view from the street, like Metal Knights or some of these other places, have a choice between having? If they're entitled to a blade sign, why can't they wave that and have the small sign on the side of their building instead. If it's the same size, I could probably go along with that. If it's the same size as a blade sign. That would be six square feet. Right. Six square feet. No, six. Yeah, so six square, six square feet. Well, mm -hmm. Maybe not a good example. Other thoughts? Then you're still at two signs. Yes, yeah, right. No, that, that makes sense. But to play the devil's advocate, take, for example, the old Coney Lane building. There would be an advantage to the <coughs> building having the signage visible coming in either direction on Hurley. Well, then they should get a blade sign. But that He's saying they have two sidewalls. They have two right? sidewalls. The blade sign would be visible from yeah, two sides. Right. Um, so you, you guys are putting way too much emphasis on blade signs. I mean, every blade yeah. sign I've looked at, I've had to, like, crawl underneath it to even yeah. read it. I, can, I, I bet you if I tell you there's a blade sign in the center of town, 8,500 out of 9,000 people wouldn't even know where it's at. I don't. Riverside Museum. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> there's one, Riverside Museum. The library has And Well, well I'm talking about the center of town. I mean, nobody sees that sign. And it's a, it's a fairly good sized blade. It's three by two. They just, you don't see them. They're hard to see. They're, they're just, they're not, they're not, they're, they're attractive, don't get me wrong. It's just, if, for a small business that needs to attract people, um, you'll 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 walk by blade signs. 
but I mean, I don't mind allowing them, but I don't think we should hang our hat on that we're giving businesses everything because we're allowing a blade size. Thoughts? We need to I, provide some direction. I, I um, am not in favor of large side wall signs. Side, I think that they're. But part of what we're trying to create uh, is a it is a harmonious sign ordinance, a visually appealing sign ordinance. And I find that the even now, I've always thought that the signs on the sides of buildings are 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 disruptive, are large. They're they they break the point. They they they're just. I just don't think they're they're appealing. I think they break the visual point of view. And um, I guess I don't. I guess I think that just because you have a side to your building doesn't mean you should be able to put, you know, it's okay to put a sign up. Um, I think part of what we're trying to do is create a downtown that's inviting to everybody, to, to current residents, to prospective residents, to current businesses, and to prospective businesses. And we're trying to do that visually, and I think we have to keep that in mind as well. And some of these large side or wall signs on the side of buildings are, are um, look like they belong in a shopping mall. Which one do you think is, I mean, just let me, just give me a. I don't like the PNC one, I think. I mean, I, I just don't think it's appropriate and I. Um, I mean, a metal mite sign is, I, I don't think that's, that's a, but, I don't but even again, think people even know it's there. So I, I, again, I, you and I differ on how we do this. I, I don't. I'm uncomfortable picking out specific signs. I look at, I tend to look at it more from a policy perspective as opposed to a, this is, I, and so from a policy perspective, I I'm don't a visual like. Guy. Well, that's okay. I mean, policy should be visual also, but that, but I'm not in favor of kind of doing <coughs> a one-off approach to, to to making policy decisions, which is what what we're doing here. I mean, this is a policy decision, so I'm not in, in, in favor of it. So, or if I would be, it would be in limiting, dramatically limiting the sign. I was just going to ask that. Am I right that there's really two legal questions here? One would be whether or not the board wanted to allow sidewall signs in principle, and if that answer is yes, then the second level would be a, a designation of the, the design standards. Besides, so right, right, standards. yeah. That's so, right. So let's let's tackle the, the first one. I mean, what do you think in, in concept of of allowing sidewall signs? No problem. What does that mean? No, I have no. What's that? I'm in favor of the <coughs> current. This the current code doesn't address it. No, but what the planning and zoning commission is. They haven't addressed it. Well, they, I thought they said. They said no. Was, they said they, no. they didn't recommend it. Right, they did not. Sidewalls. I thought you said they just said they didn't talk, talk about sidewall signs. Mm -hmm. Right. No, they do talk about it by saying where you can have a sign. Right. right. There yeah. was never they any discussion it. about changing. But they never where had signs. Right. You know, adding an additional location that you could put a but sign. But they didn't reject the idea of a sign. Yeah, sign. they did. But it's by considered a second the sign. They, they said did. specifically the where the signs can go. And it's a secondary sign. Uh, right so away. That's what it currently says, and we have we did not discuss so you're changing okay with that. It. I guess you're not. You're okay with it. How about the site? I, I'm not okay. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think I'm okay be with as an with sandwich board sidewalk signs in general. I'm not okay with being. You know, it, it has to be like right here, and it can't be anywhere else. You know, we, where it's okay. As long as it's not. But we're talking about side side wall. Mountain. Oh, side wall. I thought you were like, a, like, a, like the middle like side. The that's, that's because right now, support. signs under the current code, they're they're limited in where they can go on a business, on a building. And right now, I, the rule is they you have to be facing right of way. Right. And I so, if there's a wall that's perpendicular to a right of way, side to the right of way, that's not a location you can put aside. I agree well, with Trustee Bellarine in the, in the end. Street. Yeah, no, I, yeah. It sure, if it's on a corner. <clears throat> I, I agree with Trustee Ballerine as far as the sidewalk. I mean, if you can see it from the street, if you're going down Quincy and, and you see the, the side of Metal Mites, I, first of all, there's an assign in this town that bothers me 
from any point of view. Any kind of sign, I think all the signs are fine. But I think that, you know, what, what I, I'm starting to lean towards like what Pat's saying. This is really starting to be restrictive to me. It's, it's feeling very restrictive. Well, I mean, it's ultimately this board that decides what it is. So yeah. if you don't want it to be restricted, don't okay. make it restrictive. Well, let me ask you, what, what happens if um, Coveney Lane, just mm -hmm. use that building for example. Okay. It's a big building. It's a deep building. It's a deep building, yeah. What happens if they end up parceling it off to four or five different, say a restaurant comes in the front, a jewelry store goes behind it, and a shoe store goes behind that, and they break out windows and doors that face the alley. Mm -hmm. Would those, those businesses be allowed signs? Um, I mean, my, my thought no, process would be no. But we do have well, some they, consideration for, let me find out where it is. Wouldn't it be like the Pipel building? Wouldn't that be, it's similar because the Pipel building's well, got the very, yeah, yeah but, but that, all that's all on the face. That's they all, all face they the all face the street. This one faces the side. This is all faces um, the outside. So they can the have, um, right now the code allows them to have a changeable, uh, a directory sign. You can have a directory wall sign um, near a door, whatever, to advertise the other businesses you have in there if they don't have frontage on it. The other one is, I believe we have, I think it's called an entry sign that's um, allowed. And I'm trying to sign some place to it. I think we allow, so it kind of covers that instance that they would be allowed. Um, an entryway sign over their door, but it, it's a little bit more restrictive. It's not the 25 square feet that you would get um, for like a normal primary wall sign or something like that. I would say it's a pretty it's unique true. circumstance, and that's a hardship. But right. <laughs> Even in the classic definition of hardship. Mm -hmm. So just, I guess I would just like to push back a little bit about one concept. I, it seems to me that, and this is this would be my reading of it, that. From 2005 through this one, there has been an acceptance of the idea that, that if a building is on a corner, an actual street corner, it warrants two signs, a sign facing each way. I'm having a hard time seeing the difference between that and metal lights. It seems to me the spirit of the code would suggest that a, that a situation like a metal lights or the, the building across from it that's for sale that has you know, the potential of a of a garden <coughs> outside for dining. Would you want would you want a, a sign facing Quincy and also one, you know, parallel with Quincy and also one facing so that as you're driving up to it, you would see it before you get there. It seems to me you would. And I don't think because, and, and maybe the only way to answer this is is to ask. But it seems to me that because the Planning and Zoning Commission didn't talk about side sidewall signs, I don't read that as being a rejection sidewall signs. But again, that's just my interpretation. I, I, I would say you know, two responses. Typically, corner buildings are allowed two signs because the concept, not necessarily always the reality, but the concept is you don't see both signs from the same spot because one's facing one street and one's facing the other street. So that addresses the issue of sign clutter because you don't see them from the same street. You don't see them at the same time. Plus, they pay a premium for those signs, for the for a corner lot, corner spot. For, because of the two street frontages, they they want identification from two public streets. Two signs on one building like this is typically viewed as as being sign clutter because they they both are visible from the same street, and they both you know they're they're right there together. Um, so I, I think that's typically the way it's viewed, and that's the way I, the way I would view it, view it as well. But it depends on which way you come in, right? Because, I mean, I mean if, you, if you take Prehop, or if you take the Village Center, or if you take First American, there are vantage points from which you can see both signs. Right. If, you, if, I'm driving, if I'm driving up Quincy, the sign that I would see on Middle Mike would be the sidewall sign long before I would see the sign on the front of the well, That's why I said in theory that's why it's done that way. <laughs> but the other factor is, and I, I knew there was another, another aspect to that too, is that 
is, is the amount of over, the overall amount of signing. So that that exception is granted typically in a sign code for a corner lot for the reasons I stated. If you grant that same, if you just grant it for corner lots, you're only going to get a handful of those. So you're only talking three or four additional signs. If you grant it for every building, you're doubling the amount of signs in your downtown, in theory, or potentially. And so now you've got a real serious sign clutter problem. If you allow every, every, virtually every building, every almost every business, not every, but at least every building, at two or three signs, now you're doubling or tripling almost the amount of signs. So, it, it, it I think that's the reason why in in almost all sign ordinances I've ever dealt with, uh, corner lots are allowed one sign per street frontage. Well, every property is allowed one sign per street frontage. Corner laws just happen to get a bonus because they're a corner law. Mm -hmm. And like I said, typically those communities that do allow a sidewall sign, they significantly restrict right. the size of that sign versus, versus the primary sign if it's not on a street. So if they do allow that sign, they're not going to get, you know, like PNC signs, both of them are the same size. Metal Mite signs, both, all, all three of them are the same size. Um, Typically, when you see the ordinances, that sign on a sidewall is a smaller sign than what their primary sign is facing the street. So let me let, let's see if we can try to move on from this. What if what if staff was to draft something <coughs> show, that would allow sidewall signs with the smaller size as an alternative to a stipulation, blade and also your that they the choice aspect that you could either pick a blade or sidewall that. Was your, that you would forfeit a blade sign yeah. if you wanted to put up a sidewalk. Would you like That's to? Would you like? Idea. Would it? Would it help to actually see that, that language in, in, in hard copy to, to, to okay. decide? Can, may I ask? Was this discussed? No, not no. Okay. And not that I don't believe you. I just we have two commissioners here. So we never chose to change it. Right. This That's so. I think. That, yeah. So do you you want? Would you like to see language? It's funny how it's never allowed, but we have that. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just saying, that's not your fault. Well, again, saying, I think that was, we have some of that has to do with the 2005 ordinance. Like you said, you read, and the one thing that's the earlier on page 10 or whatever it was we were looking at that says, you know, this is where wall signs are allowed to go. That applied to the entire village. Then all of a sudden in 2005, we applied standards to the B2 and the B1 that were separate. So now all of a sudden you have additional restrictions that were added. So these are signs that were probably put in prior to 2005, in the case of Metal Mites, originally. Yes, I realize their signs are only a couple years old, but that's a different discussion from the fact that that sign was there before, previous to 2005. The 2005 ordinance put a lot of restrictions on in response to creating a downtown feel. And so you have all these restrictions that came in that were specific to the B2 district and what the idea of a downtown pedestrian oriented um, area is supposed to be. And so you have all your B2 restrictions that you came up with in the zoning ordinance and you have these sign restrictions that were put in at the same time as part of that entire discussion. So you have signs like PNC and Metal Lights that were there pre-2005 that are on the side wall because they are facing they're view, visible from the street, previous language. 2005 comes along and now says you're only allowed on a wall that is facing you know, the street, parallel to the street. That's so I ask at. again, would you like to see language with, regarding that it would allow sidewall signs with design parameters attached? Yes or no? Ms. Collins? You don't, you're fine, do you want to see? Yes. You know, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm getting torn because I know the next discussion is going to be raceways and illumination, and then after that is going to be hours of illuminations, and the next after that is going to be something else, and we're going to keep adding on to this, this thing. Um, and I don't know if that's really the intent. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, so you just want to leave it the way it is? Well, I'm, I'm, I... I, I I would leave it the way it is 
I mean, if we could, if we could, if we could, I mean, I, I talked to a couple of the businesses that had signs that we all agree we don't like. And I think th three have actually stated that, you know, if there was some sort of cost sharing program, um, they would be interested in, 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 in taking advantage of that. Um, so if we if we put together a cost and, and you know the other if we put together a cost sharing program and we said you know if you do something in the first twelve months it's fifty percent the second twelve months it's thirty percent or whatever and we we, we, we establish that and then and we and we 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 grandfather the, the, the signs in we grandfather them all in and we hope that you know, over the next two years, the signs that are really the ones that, that are causing this whole debate will evolve. And I, and I think they will. I, I, I have a lot of faith in our, in our downtown businesses. Um, you know, they, if they have good, good business, if they, their business, I, the thing is, is they're small business owners and, and I'm a small business owner and there are, there are times that, you know, I don't pay myself. And, you know, there are times that, you know, that we do very well. So, I mean, it's just, it's a matter of timing. So I think if we gave them a year to try to do something, I think they, I think most of them would come around. Um, but what is, but. And then we don't have to argue about bevel well, lights. We don't have to. Well we, well, we do, because right now, under the current code, we don't allow sidewall signs. Well, if we grandfathered them, we wouldn't have that argument. And, and so the next building that came in there, you would not buy, allow the sidewall sign. Are we talking about grandfathering all the way back to 2005? Because this was side; these signs were not are a part of the 2005 code. But so we allowed grandfathering but we allowed, back 10 years. But we years. allowed that sign to be be installed three years ago. But, but you can't have an incentive program and grandfather the yeah, all the signs. There's make... nothing. There's nothing to no requirement. Well, there's, you don't have to have a requirement. You can have the, the incentive. The, the, you don't have to have a requirement for someone to take advantage of something. Well, what would the standards be? For the, the standards would be to repair, replace, or whatever, any signs downtown that, be, that, are, that have become non-conforming by the 2014 ordinance, okay? And you have to be a business owner in good standing. You can't have any violations or tickets or whatever. And you can bring forth an application to the the planning zoning commission and they will they will hear all applications so like a grant program yeah like a, grant, a grant program you, you don't a have voluntary to voluntary grant program. exactly exactly I, I and i think people would take advantage but, of that but i think we're okay, I, I think we're not there yet with regard to the ordinance the, the question that i'm asking is does this board in the ordinance going forward do you want to allow sidewall signs so and if, for and if you buildings, and if you businesses. and if you do want to allow sidewall signs, do you want to put design parameters on them? That's a separate question. And, and here, I I'm getting I'm getting frustrated. I feel like we are micromanaging this process at this point. We're talking about what word we're going to put in. What word. We do have a planning and zoning commission who has spent a year on this, and so whether or not I agree with everything that they have in here or not. I say we go with what they have and we quit micromanaging, we quit trying to change every single thing. And that's why I'm saying grandfather current science because then we can deal with the issue of that separately and try to encourage these people. And I just don't think that we can write this and go through every one of these things and say what we think is any more important than what planning and zoning thought. So that's why I'm just saying I, but, I, I just feel like we're being micromanagers well, right now. I guess, I guess if that's the case, then your answer to my question would be no. Correct. But you don't want sidewalks. I, and I've said that, right. Yeah, okay, so that's um, that's the answer I'm trying to get first. Yes, I do not. Okay. I don't want them. You don't want them. You're okay with them. You don't want them. Well, I have to say I'm okay with them because I wouldn't I wouldn't eliminate them because we already, I wouldn't eliminate them on the businesses we already have them. I don't think that's fair. I'm not uh, opposed to them in concept, but I think that they should be an alternative to a blade sign. My preference is not to allow them. I. You know, if, if we want the staff to try to draw up some language uh, where it limits the number of them that, that we could end up with and limits the size of them and is in lieu of the blade sign, I might consider it. Okay, 
and I and I am willing to consider the sidewall signs with design parameters. So if you want to work up language for that. Okay. So now moving on to page ten. Anything on page ten? Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Okay, twelve. Twelve D one. That takes care of some of the larger sites, right? So we have the the. No, um, the the recommendation that I had for the one square foot for one square foot will come under the wall sign, okay, the specific wall okay. sign area okay. section. On so page fourteen, the only thing I saw was number eighteen to strike electronic. The only, right. What was that? Strike electronic, because we've already defined rear board signs as being electronic. Just for so consistency. The conformity, I think, because it's right. a defined term. Right. 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 15. Well, reader boards can be electric or manual in the definition. So are we going to say that we're not going to allow manual reader board signs either? I think the whole point of this saying electronic reader board was that it was specifically for electronic reader boards is what we didn't want. We weren't necessarily saying you couldn't have a manual. Are manual reader boards a thing that you see regularly now? Churches, oh, and churches have them. Mostly churches, you're not going to see a whole lot of them in the downtown, I wouldn't think, but except for possibly um, like a directory sign. Okay. So do we want to strike it or just leave it alike? Just well, if it's, used, if it's used in distinction to our defined term of reader board, then we should leave it as it is because mm -hmm. it's not Right, because reader board the definition term. says either manual or right. electronic. <coughs> I can't even imagine what a manual reader board would be. A lot of churches. Church. It's Methodist the slided letters. Yeah, they have them at First Presbyterian. Isn't First Presbyterian? But isn't Presbyterian that changeable? The Riverside Presbyterian. Riverside Presbyterian. Yeah. Yeah. So does the Methodist board. Church, yeah. Okay, so we should leave it. In that location, because okay. it's not, okay. because reader board Got it. includes both kinds of reader boards. Okay. Page 15. 16. 17. 19. 19D. Where, where did 50 come up with? I mean, where did that number? Is that a 50 foot candles? Oh, yeah, I a, researched other communities, and that was a fairly standard one that was used. I found one community that was as restrictive as 30, but most communities was 50 foot candles. So that was my research that I did. And so brought to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay. What about hours of illumination? We already decided that yeah. one. Back to the 12, 12 30. Yeah. Um, but not under under the hours of illumination, it authorized the exemption for the signs during the which necessary to preside over. Okay, the last sentence. Yes. Illumination of signs during the hours otherwise prescribed is necessary or desirable for security and the safety of the activity or for the property. Um, which I think there's there's a couple there's a couple signs at least one that I know of that 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 comes in. Why can't that be handled by you? instead of going to the, P the Planning and Zoning Commission. I mean, I think that would, I mean, if you're okaying signs, I don't see why, you know, if, if, if the security. Well, I think an exemption from the rule is not typically something just handled by staff, typically. So I think this allows for. What about that? You could, there, the, you, you do see things in zoning codes like where there are planned developments where you have like a major or minor amendment and if something is minor, the staff can, can make the, the call and allow it. And, and I believe that that's acceptable without having a hearing process. I mean, I think, well, we'd have to, we'd have to look at it. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I think there's standard built in here that gives staff some parameters to work with. I so are you guys okay. are you okay with changing that to zoning administrator instead of planning the zoning commission? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'd, I'd rather leave it the way it is because if I were staff I would not want that responsibility. Uh, I would not want that burden of being the one that has to decide 
you know, whether or not they <coughs> have their lights on. Um, Ms. Hamilton, this is about how I... I don't have a problem. You don't have a problem with zoning administrator? With zoning administrator, yeah. How about the site, Mike? How about the zoning administrator? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good question. I'm happy to play the nice guy every once in a while. Okay. So. so we have a consensus for zoning administrator? Yeah. Okay. Okay, what about uh, E? The question in E is whether uh, this board, <coughs> now this is a change from oh, 2000, this is a change from 2005. Ben, I didn't hear yeah. uh, On E, under prohibited illuminated signs. Oh, you mean F? Oh, the new F, no, I'm F. sorry. Yeah. Um, in the 2005, backlit, facelit being the same thing, uh, were allowed, this would prohibit backlit, facelit, except for silhouettes. Is that a correct statement? Mm -hmm. Right. So the question is, do you want to be more restricted than the 2005 ordinance and now prohibit backlit, facelit signs? Backlit, facelit signs would be signs that would be like Riverside Foods? Yes. Um, back, a backlit originally is an older term for a year's typical <coughs> illuminated channel letter sign and more recently has started becoming synonymous with a silhouette style whereas prior that was what a typical channel letter was called so going forward um, that's kind of why I put facelit slash backlit in there because we call it backlit but nowadays we would call it a facelit facelit light so um, but yeah this would be prohibiting light shining through the face of a letter which would be Riverside Fuse, Fuse Riverside and Fiore. Fuse, um, Fiore, that would be PNC. Or signs of that ilk yeah. in the future. Okay. I, 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 again, I, we're gonna, I don't know what, I don't Most know Most box signs, facelit illumination. Would you want to allow facelit face signs? I, I, don't, I don't see anything wrong with the facelit signs. I, I agree with Pat. I think that we're micromanaging this. I, I this is the work of I, the, I agree too. You know, I think we should just, uh, I'd like to go with what's recommended by the Planning Commission on this. I want to go with it too. And actually, the, this was a hard thing to come to me for, um, for, the, for the individual letters. So, uh, but I'm going to go with the Planning Commission on this. So there's a consensus to well, restrict I, facelit? I, yes, but I, I wanted to. As usual, one to comment. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was kind of on the fence on this one before the last planning and zoning commission. It's kind of like, yeah, what's so bad about it? But I got to tell you, the planning and zoning commission, the architects on the commission and the non-architects made a very, made some very convincing statements about the architectural impact of, of facelit signs versus back signs. <laughs> And that kind of put me over the edge, say, yeah, you know, they, they, that's, they, they know what they're talking about, and, and they, they convinced me that we were doing the right thing by limiting it to backlit signs. So, yeah, I, I would agree with the Planning and Zoning Commission on this one. Mr. Foley? Uh, go with the commission. Okay. So we're going to no, restrict. What, what about, let me ask you a question, Riverside Foods, if it's not lit? I think technically it still would. Uh, Sonia answer, but my thought would be it'd still be in violation because it's transparent letters. And, there's, and they're required to have opaque well, letters, right? Well, that we talk about the letters as much as we talk about the illumination. Oh, so they okay. can't be yeah. facelit illuminated. So if they don't illuminate them or they remove the... Remove the illumination. You know, the box or whatever it is that's bringing that would be bringing like you know electricity to said sign that i think we would say that it's in compliance <coughs> and would make them remove well two said sign hasn't been lit for the last right. year or so but is it just a matter of them no. flipping a switch or is it that there is no electricity to it that would need to be confirmed on my end and then i would be able to say they're fine yeah as they long as they in. otherwise met the area requirements and so mm -hmm. forth Okay. So, facelit, backlit will remain prohibited. 
page 20, 21, 22, 23, that 22, yes, sir. five and six. Signs shall be, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, number six. Signs must be permanently mounted. Where are we at again? Page 22, Blake signs. signs. Can't you just say Number six, it says signs, such, such signs, light signs, must be permanently mounted. I assume that you want to say what's permanently mounted. Just securely mounted. Permanently mounted. I mean, would be, you can't, I can't take the sign. <laughs> yeah, I securely, mean. Securely, you prefer? Securely. And, and as far as, well, let's talk about lighting and blade signs, if there is, if, uh, you know, um, some blade signs that I have seen, the illumination is in the bracket, in the design of the bracket, so that would be considered an internally illuminated sign. Well, the uh, bracket isn't the sign. <clears throat> well, the bracket is part of the sign, or is it not? No, no, it wouldn't be part of when you when you're talking about the internally illuminated The mounting bracket sign. that holds the sign to yeah. the building, you're not going to consider that part of the sign. That's not well, part that's of the sign. Not for case. illumination purposes, no. But no. if the illumination is part of the bracket. I understand, but it's not part of the sign. Without the bracket, the sign is separate from the bracket. The bracket. That, but that's not what we're that's focusing a mounting, on. That's a mounting hardware. Yeah. That's how it's mounted to the building. I don't consider the brackets behind the sign that mounts it to the building part of the sign. Without the bracket, you can't hang the sign. I know, but right. it wouldn't be considered like part of the area of the sign, for example. I understand that, bracket. but wait, I, I'm saying if you're going to illuminate Internal illumination is saying that the illumination is coming from within the sign itself, and the bracket is not part of the sign itself. Okay. It, it, okay. So I, if I somebody were to come in with that, I would have been okay with it. Of, of bracketed signs mm -hmm. where the illumination is coming from the bracket, shining on the sign. Down on yes. the sign. Mm -hmm. Right? So now the illumination is part of the bracket, and it's lighting the sign. So how do you differentiate? I would say that that would be external illumination. Okay. And external illumination is permitted. That's all I have. Okay. Page 23, 24, 25, 26. I, 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 <coughs> I know I'm getting 24 exposed raceways. I mean, I know it was discussed that exposed raceway signs, if the raceway is an integral part of the design, and or hidden or camouflaged by the sign or the front frontage of the building. I don't know why we, why, I, they, I know they talked about it and they, they voted against it. So I'm just bringing it up even though obviously I don't have any support on it, but I'm gonna continue to bring up these things. I agree with you. <coughs> so at some point I believe you had offered language that would yes, describe said, other alternatives, like if the raceway is blended with the facade of the building or something like that. Right, I had in my staff report proposed that if they wanted to allow <coughs> um, raceways, that we should add a design standard to it, that they need to be painted to match the facade of the building. But the that they're mounted commission to. didn't. Um, the commission made a recommendation um, and it failed. Um, it failed to pass um, to allow that. So. Usually the reason that people go with a raceway sign is because of the electrical uh, existence within the building. Mm -hmm. And the raceway is put into the sign to get the electricity of the sign or the power to the, for the sign closer to the source of the power. So we either allow them to use a longer whip to get a center mounted sign or we allow them to use raceways because in a lot of these old buildings the way that they're wired is the electricity is over here, and my sign is over here. I have to get my power to the sign. I need a raceway. I, you know, I mean, these are... Yeah, but the raceway doesn't extend all the way. I understand that, but... To, it, to the end. So would you like to see, would you like to see the language that... Is but I get what you're you see where I'm going yeah, with that? I, I mean, it, 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 a lot planned. of these older buildings, the reason they went with that is because that's all they could do electrically. In, within their budget. Mm -hmm. 
Um, this is another one where I finally came to the conclusion that I'm going to go with what the plan commission recommended. I agree with the plan commission recommendation. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He's been beaten now. <laughs> Whatever the commission are. says. <laughs> I'm the lone wolf. Uh, no, you're right. <laughs> Page 25. Um, can we actually go back to 23 for a minute? Sure. Um, it's um, 3A is where we would be adding right. the, further, uh, the further regulation that would um, allow for the single user buildings um, to have a little bit more signage. And that, that was the one square foot per, per year. Foot. Colonial right. foot with a maximum of 75 square feet, and that would be put in this. Okay with that, right? mm -hmm. that would be put in this section. Okay. Thank you. If the board is on. Okay. Yes. Okay. 25, 26, 27, 28. I had a question on page 28, and this is something Mr. Foley has brought up before. Um, with regard to design considerations, does is there any interest in, in offering more guidance as to the, the brackets themselves, the decorative nature of the brackets with regard to the, the blade signs? Or are you fine with just what it says? Such as? Yeah. I mean, do you want them out of <coughs> metal or wood or? Actually, I had brought up at the last meeting that we should probably strike wood from there for the I brackets. I would and highly just recommend metal. that okay. you strike wood from there. So Attached just metal. metal. So the sign itself could be the like the sandblasted wood. Um, so we just want to say attached to a metal, metal, metal decorative then. bracket. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Just a, again, just a drafting question. In, um, in paragraph four where it talks about uh, November 1st, I take it that was just because this is an earlier draft. Yeah. yeah we would yeah. just adjust yeah. that to whatever the passage sure. date was. Yeah, yeah. It'll, be, it'll be whatever date your final. Yeah. So what does everybody think about the amortization issue? So again, the Planning and Zoning Commission's no recommendation. No one knows my opinion. No one knows my opinion. Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation those, based on Trustee Pollock's uh, suggestion was to, for all signs that remain not conforming by the 2005 ordinance change, that Gentlemen, this amortization Gentlemen. schedule. Gentlemen, please. You're welcome to talk, but take it outside. Um, that the amortization schedule would stand for those uh, as proposed and then they would have a separate amortization schedule or time of 10 years for those signs being made by the 2014 dates. <coughs> so those that are already non-conforming would have to bring them into conformance within five years based on the value of the sign. Those being made non-conforming by any changes that we're proposing now would be required to bring their sign into conformance uh, in 10 years. Ms. Collins? <laughs> Since none of you know what I'm going to say. I feel that if we support our businesses, we treat them with a carrot and not with a stick. And so there is a way to accomplish this that does not involve causing them a hardship, which I think this will cause them. And so I am in favor of grandfathering all current signs and aggressively pursuing those that we think need to be changed, offering incentives, whatever the case may be, and if we, cur if we are serious about helping our businesses, I just don't see any other way to do this. So. I agree. I agree. I disagree. <laughs> I, I, I just, did you want to I just, I have a different perspective. I, I think that as trustees, we do have an obligation to our businesses, but we also have an obligation, we have an obligation to our current businesses, we have an obligation to future businesses, we have an obligation to our current residents. We have an obligation to future residents. And we really have an obligation to the future. And I would agree with what President Sells has repeatedly said, that we have an obligation to continue 
to beautify the village, and we have an obligation to continue to improve the structural integrity of the village. And I think that the sign ordinance, as proposed, um, and I does both. And I think we need to think about that. I, I think that we are not making it more difficult with this sign ordinance for businesses. For those, in fact, in some ways it's simpler because our, our signs are now all over the place because we haven't done a, a, a good enough job, in my opinion, of enforcing the signs. By having a sign ordinance that's in place and enforced, new businesses coming into town will know exactly what's expected of them. I think we've all agreed that we want a variation procedure and that our lawyers have told us how we can actually work with the definition of <clears throat> hardship such that businesses can, can talk about how the sign is really important to their businesses. We've waived the fees for applying for a variation. And in fact, once we talk about the changes that were made by the plan commission and, and tonight, there will be a handful of businesses that will be affected. And they will, yes, I mean, they will have to take some time to fill out a form and come to a business meeting. But, but that's not exactly what I would call putting terrible restrictions on businesses. So, so I think that it's not making it more diff difficult. I think that this village has spent, for us, a lot of money and a lot of time bringing to, to improve how we look and how we think about ourselves. We started with the water tower campus. We've moved to the parking, the new parking on um, Burlington Street. We have money now for the train station, which really needs the work. When you go in it, you look at it. When you go outside, you look at it. And now the streetscape. I, I will quote President Sells again, much to his detriment, that this is a part of the continuing beautification and the improvement of the structure. I think it's, it, I think it's incumbent on everybody in town to, re, to, to want to be a part of this and, and, and to participate in this process. And empty storefronts do not beautify our downtown. Joe, I think you, okay, <coughs> but I'm just saying, you about saying. whether a new sign is going to cause an empty storefront. And, an, and particularly because we are saying that we're going to be helping with the, um, with the expenditures for the new signs. So but I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, Gina. I think that we do need to work to beautify the downtown, and I totally agree with that. I'm just saying there are, there's more than one way of accomplishing that. And I, I would prefer the carrot rather than the stick. I, I don't think, can I just say, I think that to characterize it as a carrot or a stick is not entirely fair because I think that we're, we've made some cha many changes in this uh, to, to incorporate some of the signs that we do find appealing and, we've, and, we're, and we're also offering money. And so I don't find it um, entirely fair to characterize a compromise that we've been talking about as a stick. Um, and I also don't have any a priori reason to believe that a carrot will work. Well, several I think that was very well said, Trustee Sussman. Um, you know, someone said earlier tonight, why do we have all these signs that don't conform? This is why, because we haven't amortized them. These signs are going to stay if we don't amortize them. They, some of them will go. Uh, some people will take advantage of the grant program. But if you take, uh, for example, the building that has all the box signs on it and one or two box signs get replaced and one or two remain, you're throwing good money at bad uh, because you still got a building that, that looks dated and, and inappropriate for Riverside because you still have these old outdated signs. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission, I, I, I think that this amortization is at the heart of, what, of their entire recommendation. So to say, I don't think, you know, if, if we're saying we, we, we want to grandfather them, let's be honest, we're not agreeing with the Planning and Zoning Commission. We're going against what they have recommended if we, if we a unanimous recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission if we grandfather these signs and if we don't enforce the amortization. Um, you know, the carrot and stick thing, it's a good analogy. I would say we're offering a huge carrot and a very tiny stick. 
Huge carrot includes the ability to add signs to the property, blade signs, add larger signs, because we've recalculated how we're calculating signs, rear wall signs, bunch of carrots out there, more signage for everybody is what this ordinance basically does. It's allowed every business in this village, virtually every business, to increase the amount of signs they have. There's also, you know, part of the carrot is 10 years. I mean, most, the, the signs that would be amortized under the planning and zoning recommendation in two or three years have been there for several years. So they're getting, you know, every, every, every sign structure has a, a limited lifespan. And they're, they're, they're getting their money out of those signs. I mean, they've already had them for up to 10 years, uh, and, and now they've got two or three more years. <coughs> All the other signs, we're giving them 10 years use of these signs. I mean, that's, that's a huge parachute for these businesses, you know, to, to fall back on. Plus, the carrot includes the grant, uh, potentially a grant program where we're going to pay for half of, of, of the cost of the sign. And finally, I would suggest that that we look at, at the variation process and we make sure it meets our needs, that it doesn't define hardship too strictly for sign variations, and it serves us instead of handcuffing us. And, 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 and with all of that, with all of that, those, car those, those carrots out there those, uh, that we're, we're, we're offering, and all we're asking is in two, three, or 10 years, you spend a few dollars and change out your sign, which will help your business by making it more attractive and help and making our business district more attractive, more customer friendly. You know, there's nothing more business friendly than doing things to bring customers to town. And, and, and I think requiring and helping these businesses change out their signs, as well as the streetscape program that we're doing, is going to bring customers to this town. And I feel very good in endorsing this ordinance as we've written it and saying this is a very business friendly ordinance. It's going to help these businesses attract customers. So I, I really feel strongly that we need to do this. Uh, we need to move forward. And um, you know, I endorse the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation for amortization. Did, did they accept the 10 year proposal that yes. you made? Yes. Yes, they, they where said. Is that, where is that in here? They accepted the two, so but they did not um, recommend the conditional sign option. Oh, okay. right. So for the 205 and the 2014. Unanimously. Yes. Well, okay, so I guess it's my, since I've been quoted so much tonight, um, um, let's just say I'm glad that I have two more weeks to think about this. Um, I, I guess I don't agree with the, with the characterization after what we've done tonight that this is a business friendly sign code. Um, I, would, I guess I'd like to know whether under the code as has been discussed tonight, there would be more businesses non-conforming than were non-conforming under the 2005 code. And I think the answer to that is yes, primarily because of the facelift component and depending on whether this board would accept sidewall signs that would also take into account Riverside Foods, Metal Knights, those businesses that would all and PNC that would now become non-conforming. So non well but if you if we allowed sidewall signs they would not be non-conforming. Correct. I mean I was where I was coming into this and, and where I leave now to think about is my goal would be much the same as what Trustee Ballerine is saying. I think that we should do everything we can to encourage new businesses and also support our existing businesses. Um, I feel like there have been, there, that, that this code has gone through its iteration tonight is more restrictive in many ways than the 2005 code, which I find troubling. Um, I read the same comments about facelift and silhouette signs that you refer to, Mr. Pollock, and came away with the exact opposite impression. I was not, it just seemed to me, I mean, to say that, that, the, that, a, that the illumination of the PNC sign 
detracts from the architectural integrity of that building is a stretch. Uh, I can imagine. I can imagine the situation. Well, but that's what that's that's what the the the, arch, the architecture say. Is that the purpose of the of the of the silhouette sign? Is it reflects the light back onto the building and accentuates the facade? Well, that's a good thing if the facade is something we're seeing. But if it's a plain facade, what is the difference between that and the faceless sign? So I, I, it troubles me that we're being more restrictive. It troubles me that we're making businesses go through a variation process to retain a sign that we allowed them to put up, that we took permit money for them to put up, that, that, that bothers me. So um, those are things that I will have to come to some kind of decision about in the next couple of weeks, and I'll wait to see the new language that Ms. Apt provides. So I think that anything else on the sign work? I had um, had brought up at the beginning um, about overlooking the uh, requirement for the landscaping and dump, dumpster screening that has to be provided in order to get a rear wall sign. I just want to make sure everybody's on board with that since I, I feel like you just if you bring out that I did not go over that. Um, if the board has any objections to that restriction. Planning and Zoning Commission has put it in there to try to, again, encourage the businesses to come in conformance with the, the zoning ordinance, which does require that screening and landscaping. So if anybody has any comments on that, or if we're okay with keeping that restriction in there, that you have to bring that into conformance in order to have the rear wall sign. Not on that, but I would like to thank you for all the work you've done and yes. to be been kind of the the center person for all these discussions <laughs> and to have to take all this feedback in and come up with options and, mm -hmm. and offer your opinion. I know this has been a lot of work and you were thrown right into it. I know the commissions worked very hard on it also, but you're the one who's been given the direction to rewrite it and mm -hmm. come up with viable options. No problem. So do you mean that? we leave here <laughs> open to rewrite, even if it goes against what this says. We're, we're telling her to go back and rewrite some things. And if what she rewrites comes back and it does not align with Jupiter and Mars here, are we saying that it's, it's enough? It's an, I mean, I've heard a couple of you say that if it doesn't align with this, you're not interested at all. I think we specifically mentioned two or three items that we would yeah. be open to see modifications. Yeah. Okay. So if it's if if it's different than what's in here, on those two or three points, um, I'm sure Sonia noted those. But yeah. I, I would expect to see a draft ordinance written as recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission, except for the change, the <coughs> specific changes that we we asked for tonight. And those changes do not include illumination, do not include raceways, and do not include. Some of those things, right? Uh, I think the consensus was to leave the raceways the way they were. And the so, silhouette illumination. So the changes were, I tried to make a note, but I'm sure I missed something. Um, <coughs> it was for back signs, sidewall signs. And to waive the fee yeah. for variations, is what I have written down. We also, there was some discussion about possibly changing the standards for variation. Um, well, yeah, more that's more of a just to make it sure that it jives with a sign ordinance and we're not looking at the kind of hardship you are with. That's, I don't think that's substantive. It's just to make sure it, it works. So we'll look at that as well. Yeah, I guess that, that raises one last thing before we move on to the rest of the agenda that I guess I would add to because there's the other thing that, that, in, is, that is interesting about this conversation tonight is, is the relationship between this board and our advisory commissions. Um, I mean, I, I do agree, especially when you have a unanimous recommendation or an advisory commission, that if this board decides to go against that decision, that uh, it's incumbent upon this board to articulate the reasons why. I certainly agree with that, out of courtesy for the work and the expertise of the commissions. Um, I do not, however, agree that uh, that a decision by a commission usurps the power of this board. Uh, very much for the reasons that, that, that Trustee Collins said. Uh, commissions by their very nature are limited in scope and purview. 
our purview is much larger and encompasses the various considerations that all of the, cons all of the commissions and beyond must take into account. So I would caution against a, a view that says, you know, if, if a decision comes from a commission then, and it's four to three, ergo, we must accept it. I, I think that would be a mistake. Um, so, just for what it's worth. Can I just say one thing about Please, that? of course. Um, I agree, I'm, and I'm not saying that everything that comes from a commission that I'm going to, but, but the reason that I will go against the commission has to be more than just personal preference, okay? Because my personal preference should not take precedence over theirs. I have no more right to a personal preference than they do. Um, when we had the fence variation, I went against the commission because in that particular case, the person in my mind had been promised something by our staff, and I think my role is to stand up for our staff, and, and if they said something, we're gonna do it. So when I'm saying I go with the commission, it's not just that I'm going to carte blanche go with the commission, it's that I will not put my personal preference above theirs, okay? And that's my opinion in some of these sign issues is I think race <coughs> signs are fine. Aesthetically, if they think they're bad, then I'm not going to say that my opinion, you know, I'm like Mike, I have no problem with any sign in this town. I'm serious, not one of these signs bothers me. And so maybe that's where this issue is coming from because <coughs> obviously they bother you. I'm just not that, I don't, I don't want to say the word that's offensive, but I'm just not that picky about things. I don't know how to say that, but it just, it, it doesn't matter to me. That does not detract from anything for me. So I, I, I don't think a sign makes a business. Yeah. I really don't. Boy, I disagree with you 100%. Uh, yeah. So I'm just saying, for my personal, it's not, it you doesn't bother me. You know what? And, and I'm glad you it makes it downtown. Ellen, yeah. you know what? There's so many stores in my mind that I know where they are and I know what they have, and I couldn't even tell you what their sign looks like. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even matter to me. Or what they're Or just going. basic folk. I don't know what to say. Yeah. So this is why we have two tables here. Mm -hmm. so, um, considerations we have none. New business. Um, I, I would just like to take one brief moment to respond to the comments that were made earlier about the streetscape and the process. Um, you know, residents are more than, than welcome to have whatever opinion of me and the process that I've used. Uh, that goes with the territory. However, I would like to say that um, Christopher Burke, the notion that somehow Christopher Burke is being handed a blank, blank check is, uh, is nonsense. The, and what I, I really want to say is that with regard to Director Apt and Manager Francis, um, their limited time here has absolutely nothing to do with the dedication and the care and the expertise that they have put into this process. Um, so I accept whatever criticism people like to throw my way, but I would ask that our staff be left out of it. So, uh, with that, is there anything else for new business? Uh, we have a need for an executive session this evening. So I'd ask for a motion to adjourn to executive session. We shall not reconvene. No final action will be taken during executive session. Motion by Mr. Second Foley. Motion Second motion for, for the purpose to consider. For the purpose to consider. Compensation, <laughs> discipline, performance, or dismissal of a specific employees. Oh gosh, As you said. That's <laughs> stated. As, and they've, they've amended their motion to right. include my <laughs> language. Okay. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Sussman. Trustee Sussman. Yes. Aye. Trustee Hamilton. Aye. Trustee Bowery. Aye. Trustee Aye. Meeting is adjourned.